you know, weird in some spots. Like we've, we've definitely sifted human remains, um, in there, you know, like molars and, and bones. Oh, and I've got a collection of human teeth. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> there's a clip for you. <laughs> that doesn't sound weird. <laughs> Said the serial killer. It's not, weird. It's, not, it's not weird or anything. It's just, you I'm know, wearing around my neck right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Did we just say like, A Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Heck yeah, man. Dude, we put a lot of food in the ground every year, you know, seemingly more and more, and uh, we have a ton of fun with it during the off season. Uh, there's some struggles that come with it too, though, right? Obviously, the back of my truck is evidence, you know, right now. It's mm-hmm. a couple of weeks after uh, I jackknifed, you know, a 4,800-pound uh, material spreader, you know, as I was coming down, and it's just it was too much weight for my truck there. But, you know, all those struggles aside, you know, dude, Deer Grill really has been a staple for our food plotting process uh, for several years now. Yes, we like to put lime and fertilizer on the plots, you know, if we can, but there are some that it's just we're not able to get to them or it's not feasible for us to get out of state with that stuff and so deer grow is kind of the, the quick and easy but still super effective option for us to be able to get the most out of those food plots that we can every year yeah, and i mean we're guilty of over analyzing things just like everyone else but that's the best part about deer grow is that it's going to create healthier soils which in turn makes better food plots and the fact is is we can simply spray plot start or plot till when we put the seed in the ground and then when that plant starts to grow we hit it with boost and we know that we walk away when we come back it's going to be a great looking food plot for anybody that's looking to try deer grow if you use the code hunter15 that's h-u-n-t-r-1-5 at checkout for deergrow.com and save 15 percent on any of your deer grow products it's a great way to get started on this and just see what the results are for yourself better food plots bigger deer And we're back. Hey, our podcast episode one forty nine. Mm-hmm. Nick continues to keep us in line. If you're listening, we appreciate you. Appreciate the comments. Appreciate the subscriptions. And uh, wherever you guys are listening, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, please subscribe to our channel. Um, we see that you know we see you guys uh, tuning in and stuff, and we appreciate you. We do. We have uh, in studio guest today. Welcome. Angela Testa, Eric Rieger. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. I don't know if those are known names in the industry. Eric, I don't know if I knew your first <laughs> name until just then. <laughs> no. I've always known you as Angela Rieger. Yeah. Yeah. So right. you get it. Either way. Yeah. I knew your name was Angela. I and most that. of the time, like, I never call you Jeremy. No. It's, it's been Flynn forever. So, mm-hmm. Lil yeah. Flinner. Mm-hmm. Lil Flinner. Yeah. Right? That was the uh, AIM name, right? Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. AOL, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was absolutely. Yeah. Lil Waiting Flinner. for those doors to open. Yeah. <laughs> These today's kids will never they'll never, never understand. <laughs> it's a yeah. shame, especially when they're trying to find a girl. They'll never never understand how you wait for them to open the door, and then just when you're about to hit send, they close the door. <laughs> yeah. I don't That's know if I happens. quite understand that either. You don't. You guys, what are you guys? Mid thirties, thirty eight, later thirties, later. 30s. 30s. later 30s. I'm thirty. Jeremy's thirty nine. Yeah, so you guys are. Yeah. you're a kid. I'm That's the right. young one. You are yeah. the young one. Nick's the young buck. I had aim. It was my first. You did not. God, was it wasn't even functional at that point. Grade. What? I, yeah, I had it. I didn't. I wasn't like fourth grade. All in though. Are you searching for women in fourth grade? No, it was just like we'd get home from school and like we'd just be like all talking to each other. Like it was just like cool. I don't Texting know. took over yeah. pretty quickly thereafter. You so were Nick, you were in the you era were in of fourth Snapchat. grade. So how old are you now? Twenty five. So that have been eight thirty three. Holy shit! I was like graduated college. I don't think I was even using AIM when you were yeah, using yeah. AIM. It was the very end days of it. They yeah, were, I think I was evolved to Facebook at that point. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. Facebook was the next thing after yes. that. Yes, right. very much so. Sorry, I don't know what that like rang about. Oh, gar- Gartismo. Ding uh, So, yeah, we, uh, Andrew Rieger, and I have known each other for quite a while, I'd say. Uh, a scary while. while, like 20 years now. A long time, yeah. Holy cow. How do you guys know each other? We went to school together, high school. High school. Same grade? Uh, Andrew and I were. I was two years behind them. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we grew up in the same small town. Small town. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I didn't meet eric until college we both yeah went really to cal u yeah i mean i feel like telling the story is like you know yeah i don't want to tell you <laughs> it's did we not how, how angelo and i met yeah, right. i'd love to know <laughs> do you want, i do you yeah. remember the story yeah i remember it's, exactly we were we were in line my <laughs> you want to tell her to me well <laughs> i mean now, now we have to tell it <laughs> but uh, versions i don't know yeah. <laughs> uh i was my friend matt i went to to college with we were in line at the at the food court mm-hmm. and matt and i you know into hunting our whole lives and we're talking about deer hunting and then there was two jokers in front of us also talking about deer hunting. Mm-hmm. I look at I look at Matt, I'm like, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then we start talking like, oh wait, we went to the same high school and then like we knew each other's names, but well, didn't, yeah. couldn't quite place our faces. I think Matt had a Hempfield shirt or something. Right. And I was like, you guys went to Hempfield? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. 
Who were you talking? Who were you? Uh, was, was it Jeff? No. no. Oh, you were saying that about him and somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Who, <laughs> I was the joker. That who were you talking. with? Uh, probably Pat. Pat Curtis. Yeah, Pat. Yeah, Pat. Yeah. We were roommates. Yeah. yeah. What well, do you recall what they were saying that you made you think they didn't it know? It was what just talking something. About? Well, I mean, it was true that uh, <laughs> Matt and I were we we were advanced from a young at, age. At least that. <laughs> yeah. At least status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we called him out. On, we called him out on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Angie and I were shooting does over golf courses. Yeah. That's a little bit yeah. below their standards. <laughs> right, right. They weren't doing that yet. No. Yeah, um, but we were hunting. I think together, like uh, a like probably weeks. that that same yeah. year. Yeah, we uh, we got on some properties together mm-hmm. and. Because yeah. I was gonna say, do we not have a picture of like all of us together? No, doing, that, like, that those was drives? probably even that same year. Right was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. See, we, I didn't we, realize it was that far apart mm-hmm. in terms of because we knew each other from running. Yeah, yeah, cross country track and all that. Yeah, huh? Yeah. So I guess I didn't put two and two together that you guys hadn't known yeah. each other yet. It was funny how that yeah. worked out. So you guys got linked, up, met at the mall. Met yeah, the mall. and I started hunting. The story together. of how we met. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We mm. were just like, "Hey, you like hunting? I like hunting. We should yeah. go hunt mm. together." Yeah, and then we did. <laughs> in, co- in college, roughly. In college, yeah. Because we were we we're all trying to figure out spots around. That, that was a new, you know, being on campus was new for us mm-hmm. coming from home, and we were figuring out all the, you know, the public access properties, private permissions we were getting. And yeah. Did you guys all live on campus? There. Um. We lived off campus. Off campus, yeah. but you did live in. You weren't living at home. You were. No, we, yeah, we were on campus. We were on yeah. campus. Yeah. Yeah. Rented a house, different houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because Jeff yeah. was there too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah, we all three lived together. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I, I guess I, I didn't. Obviously, it's been twenty plus years, but like, I didn't know that you weren't like in our yeah. group just because I knew like what we did all the time. Right. And so, yeah, I didn't realize that you weren't in the group. It was funny because the three of us, Ange, Jeff, and I, like every evening in the fall, we'd come back from class. We'd all get our hunting gear on, like get mm-hmm. our bows. And whoever was going different, like we'd drop each other off at different places. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had that whole area just oh, yeah, we were trespassing a lot of times. But sure, well, sure. Yeah. yeah. Got some nice deer there, too. Yeah. <laughs> for dropping into somewhere we didn't know where we were. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, even trapping. I caught that black coyote right Bob by our house. There, there was a newspaper article about us. Yeah. And I remember we were... A st- good newspaper article? Yeah. yeah. It, wow. was, it was Local in the, teens it was in the trip, trapping right? on school grounds. <laughs> it was in the trip. It was in the trip. And, and in the we Sunday were, sports section. We were spotted at a bar in Cal. People were like, wait, you guys are the ones from the article that caught that bobcat, that black coyote in yeah. Cal. Right. That was right next we, to our we house. We were like, someone read that article? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like the sports section of the trip. That's a popular. The outdoor section was pretty popular on Sunday mornings. That was right. the first thing we would turn to. What's the what's yeah, the hunting a, section? Yeah, and yeah. That's everybody got to talk about. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. What school was that? Cal U. That's Cal California U. University. And you guys were rooming together. Yep. Yep. When we met, we weren't. And then we soon. The like, next year, we got we, we got, got a house. place together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's yeah. Cal U called now? Penn West. <sighs> what? Clarion, Edinburgh, and Cal. They all merged. So they're all called Penn West. Mm-hmm. They're all called. It's called like Penn West at California. Penn West at Clarion. It's not great for We still say Cal. Yeah, it doesn't sound. Yeah, Cal U. Right. Not California, University of you know, California. Pennsylvania, yeah, right. Yeah. We said that, people like, what? Yeah. yeah. UCLA? Um, what? Yeah. No, not but that it was, it was a small school, but we, um, yeah, that's all we did was just hunt That, that was trap. fun because that's how we got into finding private permissions, and entrapping that became a huge part of, mm-hmm. entrapping you can't just have one good farm. You need yeah. 30, 40, yeah. 50 good farms and so we just we just started, you know, developing. You know, you guys have talked about it with other people before, but developing a pitch that worked for us mm-hmm. and that approach. And sometimes we'd go together. Sometimes we would be brothers. Sometimes oh wow! We'd be cousins, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. role play. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, I mean, what, what, and, and when we would we would you know meet people, we'd kind of feel out the situation and see oh, yeah. where we needed to steer the conversation. Yeah. Some people would assume we're brothers, like yeah, we'll my be brother. yeah. 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 yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mom's gonna want us home for dinner real yeah. soon. Yeah, we even yeah. got we got a lot of no's initially. Like people would say no, and then we just kind of work that. Where and before we know, we have a yes and sure park at the barn. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that is something we wanted to talk about too, is like getting permission and stuff. Being trappers, that's a huge door opener. Like if you're You just, think it's easier? It's so much easier. To it's, get in as a trapper. It's yeah. not even it's it's like night and day. If you're just going up and saying to somebody, if your first thing out of your mouth is, Can I hunt here? Mask permission <clears throat> to hunt, like that's an almost a guaranteed no. But if you go in there and say, Um, I want to kill some coyotes for you or kind like, like trap some coyotes, a lot of people were very open to that. And then you develop a relationship with the landowner, like you're texting them pictures of coyotes and they're like loving you. And then maybe the next year 
we get in for like archery hunting and stuff. So it's definitely something that opens doors. It's interesting because you would think that, um, and I guess it would depend on where you're at, but you know, there's probably a lot of people that think that trapping maybe even has more of a negative connotation than hunting does in terms of like how it's viewed and inhumane yeah. and everything about it, at least coming from a non hunting or trapping background. Most landowners are, and it's going to change obviously, but most landowners are probably 60 plus. Yeah. And they're way more open to trapping. Yeah. So it's, I don't, yeah. I don't know if that humane thing is the main thing that keeps hunter, you know, uh, uh, people from giving permission. You know, I, I think it's more liability and people thinking about somebody trouncing and all over the property. Those are younger landowners mostly yeah. that, that we get those kind of responses from. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the trapping, if you portray it like, hey, you know, I just go out, I set the trap line, I'll just be back to drive around, check it. You I'm know, here for five, I'm on your property for five minutes. Yeah. Maybe less, just driving through, checking traps and I'm gone. Yep. A lot of landowners don't even know we're there. Um, we're checking them before work and yeah. and they're animals that these guys probably never they see don't know or even know that they're yeah. there. Yeah. And when you go up the and deer, say, they're like, oh, I like the deer. They're in the yard. Yeah. Something. But there's so many landowners that when you say, oh, I'd like to maybe trap coyotes or kill coyotes in your property. And like, we don't have coyotes around here. And it's like, yes, you do. Yeah, like, you they're do. everywhere. You around have a here. lot of them. Like I saw one this morning driving to work, crossing the road onto your property. But as soon as you tell them that, like if they don't, if they're not expecting coyotes to be around and then you tell them they're there, they're like, oh yes, please kill them. Please trap <laughs> yeah, we them. We don't want them. No, we don't want them. So that's like, yeah, sure. But that's just all about uh, building relationships with landowners. It's just like, it's very easy that way. And if you're not a trapper, I would even say start hunting them and just use that too to get on there. Like, oh, we <clears> just <throat> want to hunt coyotes for you and kill some coyotes for you. Mm -hmm. um, Deer hunting is probably the pinnacle of permission. It's like, start with anything, shed, shed yeah, hunting, right. e even turkey hunting. Trapping is probably a, a, a easier barrier to well, entry. Another big hobby of ours is hunting for artifacts, arrowheads. Mm -hmm. Let me and, go look for mushrooms. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And it's it, whatever we can do to get on. You guys find a ton of arrowheads, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. That, I find that so crazy, dude. I've like I've never found. Oh, I found one. You in just South have to Dakota. look down. I mean, that's you guys are like walking that's what through I found fields, over the years. Yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, here's one. We're walking yeah. plowed fields because Emily yeah. will be like, they're always finding them. I'm like, I don't know. But now that we kind of have a, a pretty good eye for that, like we do find them accidentally, pretty regularly now. While we're hunting, walking through a field, I'm always. You gotta have your eyes down, but um, yeah, it's if you're in the right, it's just like hunting deer, anything else. Like it's location, it's scouting, it's getting permission, like all that Do you stuff. Know, ties how in. many have you found? How many arrowheads? In uh, the last three, <laughs> and in the last three years, I've found about um, 120. No Holy! Yeah. In yeah. Pennsylvania, all in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Now, now, if you if you go to Ohio, people would be like, I find 120 in a month. Yeah. No, they don't. Just oh, because yeah. of where the populations have been distributed over the last, you know, couple thousand years. So they've told me like on the farm that I have down there, they're like, you need, like, it's all over the place here. And I haven't turned that ground. Like, so I don't oh, know. Yeah. When you do, give us a call. Yeah, we want to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even when you're at, where you're at in Kentucky, like, that's, oh, yeah. that's amazing. Down, you we guys do, find we them sift. Under, we sift under the sandstone. Rock shelters and rock stuff. Rock shelters yeah. and stuff. And and that's yeah, something we, we haven't done. We have, that's a whole other way to find them is yeah. like sifting and we just walk plowed fields we do a little bit of hunting uh next to rivers and stuff we mm -hmm. find some stuff because that's what i see is like guys are like walking in the creek and they're like look at this one and i'm like what the hell like i walk a ton of creeks i don't find shit yeah you watch videos like guys in missouri uh, uh they're just finding so much like awesome stuff huge stuff um but around here yeah we find a ton it's the area we live around here is just amazing like every field is it mainly arrowheads as you're finding or is there like spearheads or other artifacts so and stuff we say arrowheads and most people know what we're talking about when we say arrowheads but most of the stuff we find are spear points at lateral points uh knife blades things like that we do find arrowheads actual like arrow points yep. but the majority of stuff <clears throat> is going to be at lateral points spear points things like that hmm. and what what's that date range back to like what do you think that because i know we've looked at it in Kentucky, like when we sift in those areas, we'll try to date them back through some of the artifact books we have for Kentucky. And I mean, it's like way back. I'll, most of the majority of stuff we find is between 2,500 and about 6,000 years old. Yep. That's when the populations were the biggest here. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of before and after that weren't as much. Who, hmm. What Indians were here? So that, that's, that's a question people always ask. And there were really no cultural identities until about 1,500 years ago. It was just, oh, and these were know, way before, yeah, just then. E egalitarian hunters and trappers and and nomadic you know, people yeah. just moving around, following. So food. no, like set up like Cherokee, no. Shawnee, no, that, it's very, it's very recent. Yeah, and see, that's what I think everybody kind of relates to, because yeah. like some of the stuff that we looked at, were like, I assume we just don't know, right? It's not that they didn't exist. Like people have probably been grouped up as long as they've been grouped up. Just they, not they didn't have all the cultural practices that they did, you know, recently, uh, fifteen hundred years ago till present. Yeah, huh. just they, I mean, they were just so busy trying to survive. That, yeah, uh, and it's it, so crazy, dude. That's not that long. Yeah, fifteen hundred years ago. Yeah, 
And then with that, that was about the it's advent. Like 15 of, lifetimes. Huh? Yeah, about the advent of farming. Then they could kind of relax, settle down. They had more free time to. And we're you know, finding, uh, like in those more <clears throat> recent uh, areas, we're finding pottery. And See, things that's like what that. we yeah. find a lot in our sifting yeah. is we'll find pottery. Um, bone you know, fragments. Bone fra- mm-hmm. you'll, like that. you'll find like a lot of like wood with bone or that was like burned, like buried deep, 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 yeah. deep in there. Yeah. You find human, fire pits. Like yeah. it, human I'm remains. Found you find a lot. Yeah, I found some I'm always found a pile yeah. of them too, right? Yeah, under our rock shelters you guys in Kentucky. Found a few dozen? Yeah, probably. We, if, in fact, um, she sent me a picture. I don't, it was probably the last time we were down there. We find a lot of broken points. So where we were at was like, you know, seemed like more of a camp area type, you know, but you find that kind of burnt wood where they had fires, fire shelters and stuff. Um, but you find a lot of broken points and things like that or, or partially worked stuff where right. they were like starting to work it but never finished it. Um, we actually found a really nice bottom um, probably six months ago and we found the top, the Oh, wow. That's very yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. like, uh, she was going through them and she's like, wait a minute, and like put it together. And like, we found a full piece, you know, it just oh, had man. been broken. So, it, you know, we're, but that area, you know, it, it sent kind of cool because it never gets rain. Like, it's, it's always dry under those, those rock shelters. How did, uh, how deep are you digging down there? Um, maybe at the most two feet at this point. Okay. Now, it's definitely been hit prior. Um, and there's actually, there's a there's supposedly a burial ground on our place. Um, I don't know exactly where it's at. We've kind of speculated at, at times. Um, but, you know, we're probably, it's been hit before. You know, people have probably come in and surface taken a lot of the good stuff out of there. But, I mean, we, you know, you'll get into a, a, a pretty good run, you know, where you're finding, you know, chips of flint, you know, things yeah. like that through there. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, you'll, you'll come on a point or something. But, I mean, you could probably dig a lot deeper in that area because, I mean, the amount of stuff that's just I have a friend that he, uh, he did a dig like that in a cave very close to here in, I think it was in the 80s. And he said he went down eight feet and was, and was finding artifacts eight feet down. Whoa. So, some of the stuff that he had was similar to, I don't know if you know, Metacroft or yep. rock, rock Shelter. and. They're they're the earliest well one of the earliest carbon dates in North America sixteen thousand two hundred fifty years and some and the one point he has he he took it there to to I think it was Doctor Adavazio like the the guy who discovered uh, Meadowcroft and he, and he said that point was analogous to the sixteen thousand year old point they had at Meadowcroft damn so hmm. and when I when I when you see that you can't help but think as a hunter that this was a hunter well that's the thing and that i do like when, when i'm sitting in those i'm already shelters. thinking like how do yeah. i turn like tr- right. shoot a trad bow and turn some of these into like right. with yeah. Them. Yeah. you hate to destroy an artifact but yeah. it's like man is it, that's pretty spiritual that'd be right? a pretty cool connection from past to present it's here. pretty nuts though i mean that like when you're sitting in those rock shelters where you've got these big sandstone rocks over you and you're you're sitting down in there and you can just imagine like why you would be there Right. Like just the way that you could see things, the way that the wet. I mean, we've been sifting in there when storms have come through, and it's like just monsoon, and you don't get wet. And this is why they're here. Yeah, right. It, it makes sense. And then even thinking like where we're at, like um, you know, Daniel Boone and stuff had come through there, and it's like, and it makes a lot of sense why people would be like find these rock shelters and like set up camps there. Yeah, seems like you'd you know? find a lot of other stuff too, even more recent, like yeah, we uh, have tins and fire making too. supplies. We haven't done a lot of metal detecting there a little bit. Yeah. Um. You know, not a ton. It more just sifting in the rock shelter areas. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, to, to Rieger's point, like I mean, we're we've been I maybe bet, two feet down. Yeah. I bet Carter's gonna love that. Oh, dude, they they he love it. Eats they look up. like they're like 1940 coal mine yeah. kids when they come out, like <laughs> covered just in like, dirt. yeah, right. covered in dirt. But dude, they'll sift up there for hours. Yeah, you know, and it's cool because you find stuff. It it also is like. You know, weird in some spots. Like we've we've definitely sifted human remains um, in there. You know, like molars and and bones. Oh, and I've got a collection of human teeth. Yeah, yeah. and it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> there's a clip for you. <laughs> Doesn't sound weird. <laughs> Said the serial killer. It's not, weird. it's not it's not weird or anything. It's just you I'm know. worn around my neck right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Did we just say like, hey, what do you want to talk about? What should we talk about? It's funny because I took him to the dentist last time I went. He finished. You're check, kidding. He yeah. finished checking out my teeth. Thank you. Check these he, out. And he's like, oh, you look good. He's like, do you have any? questions i'm like hold on and i, I reached <laughs> into my pocket and i pulled out a ziploc bag of human you don't teeth. go up here in, in uniontown do you <laughs> no no right. it's in uh, actually in brownsville okay, okay. Is, see you know, but uh <laughs> i pull them out and, and and he's like yeah he's like but these should like look like they're fossilized <clears throat> yeah. i'm like can you just tell me they're human for sure yes. can you he's verify like, yes, can i just human. get this one replaced <laughs> yeah. yeah and he's like so these are adult tooth he's like these are baby teeth that have fallen out because the the roots decayed mm-hmm. off and so it's Need to see that whole. We yeah. found um, 
we found one section that I'm I'm 99 percent sure is an elk jaw because at one point there had been elk all through that area and you know it's a piece and and you know very similar to what your your deer molars and stuff would look like just larger. Does it have the, I, I have, a, have the ivory on it? No, it's, it's only a chunk of the um, like mm. the back molar mm-hmm. side. I have a few it. of those uh, elk jaws and I have I have a, a really awesome. It's like a perfect condition. Uh, wolf canine tooth mm-hmm. and I, I have some bear molars and, and things like that that i found very cool but it's, just, it's just cool to see because you know they're not here well bears are but it's it's nuts to think and, um like i said just sit there and be like man like i could i can't even imagine what this looked like 1500 years ago 20 right you know six thousand years ago like what this even looked like the coolest um, thing is when you find a point and you pick it up and you realize I'm the first one to touch this in maybe 6,000 years. <laughs> and then you're looking at it and you're like, okay, well, what did this thing do? Did this yeah. kill an animal? Did this kill yeah, a it's person? It's in good shape. Why was it Right. Was it just dropped? Down. Right. What happened? Um, yeah. And then you're starting to just like imagining the story you're putting behind it. And then you're looking around the landscape, like you're saying, yeah. and imagining what this place looked like at that time. And it's just such a cool feeling to get that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, some yeah. of the books that that go with those, like we we found some specific Kentucky ones that we look at and to go back through. But it, it's cool to that will help tell the story a little bit. So when you're finding some of that, and you can try to, you know, it's not going to be to the but like try to date range it and understand what was going on back then. But yeah, I, you know, I found ones where like you know partially finished, and you're like, why did he stop or why did mm-hmm. she stop? Like what what happened or you know did they just leave it go and they had to move? Like you just don't know. And you think also at that time when you were a kid you had to learn that skill of napping some mm-hmm. of those were made by people our kids age yeah right dude can, like, you, can you i'm sorry to cut you off can, yeah, you, yeah. can you imagine like three thousand years from today people picking up like rage expandables yeah, <laughs> right. they're like what did it what was this what did yeah. they use this for some great hunter must have yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right right he it's, it's attached this. to a 12-inch <laughs> bolt right <Yeah. laughs> they're like oh no no, no, no just no. a bolt just yeah. just a crossbow hunter <laughs> <We Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're at this section of the book. Yeah. Yeah, we go. But uh, have you guys ever tried napping? Like actually making a point? No. Out of, yeah, it's insanely hard. And it's one yeah. of those things you have to just put in like tons of hours to get good at it. And there's guys that do it and kill deer with it. And like you were saying before, like mm. that would be the ultimate thing to have like yeah. traditional setup and making your own points and killing a deer with that would be so cool. Do you guys hunt with uh, trad bows at all? Uh, yes. Recurves. Uh, I've, yeah. I've never got a deer with it. That's a goal. Now that I, since I tagged out first day this year, that's... I got a whole season to do it. He's he's got some. Yeah, right behind your house is the yeah, first one. Yeah, um, other than just dough with a recurve. Yeah, which is cool. That's which is awesome. Yeah, Jer- Jeremy's got his recurve. So you're mm-hmm. gonna try first time this year. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. I, I shoot a lot, but uh, you know, kind of how you've described yourself before, it's it's hard to hit that rhythm. Yeah, twelve yards and in, I am deadly. But oh yeah, it's, it's like twelve is the magic number for me. Yeah, fifteen yards, yeah, fifty fifty. I shot twenty five <laughs> last night, pretty consistently, oh. like this. Like that, right. You know? So that could go either way. Yeah. It could go either way. I also launched two yeah. over the top. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but uh yeah, it's just um it's it's funny though, because the more I shoot, then it's like starting to get that muscle memory. Mm-hmm. So I'll get more accurate. But dude, one time rusty from the stand, it, yeah. you're not gonna have that muscle memory. You get that one shot and that's it. What kind of arrows are you using? Uh <clears throat> Easton uh Axis Trads. Okay. Um, feathered, and then I've got seventy five grain brass inserts in it, and then hundred and fifty grain uh broadhead okay. on that nice so yeah it's such a cool thing i mean oh i loved it dude yeah it's just something about shooting a, mm-hmm. a recurve or a longbow i would like to get a longbow and try to shoot that too that would be pretty it's cool. just so hard to get over the you know the fear of a giant buck is 25 yards away and sure. you feel incompetent with this stick in your hand well we talked to like donnie vincent he said basically if it's like at 25 yards, he doesn't even pick it up. Just walks past. Yeah. He's, he's like, I've like got an opportunity. That, it might be a once in a lifetime deer that you're just watching. Mm-hmm. Well, and you, have and to, you have to probably commit to like, yeah. this is what I'm doing. This right. is what yeah, I do. Just, Especially when you're so proficient with a compound. Yeah. It's Which like, I think, think about it, like even with a compound, like, you know, when a deer walks out at 60 yards, like most of us are not take, with a gun, yeah. it's no brainer. That's get that. Mm-hmm. Well, on your side, you just have to accept that this is my weapon. This is how I'm, I'm hunting. Yeah, you can't take a compound with you, too. And yeah, I wouldn't think so. Like, we've been out uh, hunting where I have a recurve, or he has a compound, and vice versa, filming, and we're like, all right, we're going to use a recurve, and then a deer, <laughs> I was like, all right, give me the compound. <laughs> you know, so you have to kind of, yeah. like, that's the only option yeah, you yeah. have to really get it done. I mean, I would think you set up for a well. I mean, you killed... Yeah, it's, I mean, that was... Can we grab it? Yeah, yeah, grab it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fresh first, kill. first mm-hmm. hour of the first day of the early season in Pennsylvania. That's wide. 
Yeah, it's really wide. There were uh, there were four deer, very similar to that 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 came through at the same time. Uh, summer bachelor group. It's the first time I've hunted that early season in, in the special regs area. Yeah, that's really cool. Worked out worked out really well. Yeah, that's when you awesome. say early season was this like a two B because it two two B right two B and like five C out east. This is both like those open two weeks ahead of the rest. Two of weeks the season? ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. September sixteenth. I mean, that's the a they've been doing that for a while now, right? They've been mm-hmm. doing that for at least a decade. Yeah, yeah. It, it used to just be does first, and then they changed. Yeah, then everything. they opened it up. Now it's bear too. You can kill a bear. Yeah, September sixteenth. goes up. There. Wow. Hmm. You guys killed PA bears? I did once. Goes, yeah, yeah, with with my bow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot up on a mountain there, like. More than you'd think. Yeah, I mean, it's just timing. Um, you know, when they opened up this bow season, it's been really cool because I feel like you have a, you know, a much better chance of seeing one just because they're not all going into torpor. You know, normally yeah. nor- the normal gun season in Pennsylvania, like most of these bears are going under. Right, just pretty crushing quickly. his acorn. They're yeah, yeah. they're yeah. really oh, this predictable year for sure. with food. Yeah, but the thing is, there's 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 you know, right now they say there's about eight nineteen thousand bears in PA, and there's one point five million deer, so it's like. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. So there's bears? there's what's that? Seventy five times more wow. deer than bear. So think of that. Like, That's wild. When you're, when you're I mean, looking for a or a bear, we were just talking. Mm-hmm. They're saying there's about fifteen thousand elk in Kentucky. Wow. So think about that's what they're saying. Yeah. So just in a small part of it too, though. Yeah. So you think about that many elk in a small part of Kentucky versus Bears how big over the entire state, which I think almost all, maybe all but one or two counties have them now. Have we hunted bear? Have we done bear drives and stuff? Uh, I think cold. probably at least once, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but the past couple of years, we've had a lot of opportunities like I've, like I've during archery them. season. Yeah, I've been bear. on them the last five. Have I, you? I read this book. Maybe you've read it. It's called Forty Four Years a Hunter. Yeah, I have. Uh, that that I don't want to say it kind of changed my my life as a hunter. Reading that book, like from from <clears throat> who's reading, the uh, what who's he's Meshach Browning? He was yeah. from this area, like Garrett County, Maryland, yeah, Western PA, West Virginia. But reading that book. Like the next year, I went out and killed a bear with my bow, just from what I learned reading this book. That's almost three hundred. I was years gonna old. say it's it's ancient. Yeah, he just talks about like how he hunts bears and he just gets downwind and he walks through food sources really slow. That's wild. It's great. And did then you I, kill yours on the ground like that? Yeah. Was, no, you yeah. didn't. Yeah, I did. I walk. I walk. I saw the bear seventy five yards away, and there. It's funny because like they have their sense of smell is seven times better than a deer, but sometimes they don't care because they're big. And they hear things, and sometimes they don't care because they're big. So you can move on them a little bit easier than if there was a, a buck on the ground. So I got up to within 20 yards, and it was almost dark. I drew back, and I drew back. I'm like, oh, no, this looks like a giant black circle because it was sitting and, like, yeah. hunched over. And I'm like, where's the vitals at? And then I saw him twitch his ear. I'm like, okay, that's where the vitals are. He it's went about though. 30 yards into the corn and started that you know you've heard the death moan but like yeah when you're when that when it's dark and you're by yourself <laughs> yeah. and this thing ran into a cornfield and i took a few steps i'm like no i can't i can't do this yeah i called him like hey, we'll come back tomorrow Ants, morning yeah. Yeah. Ants, come help me yeah. Yeah. Uh, i'm scared yeah yeah <laughs> that's crazy man that is a, it is funny though i read one I can't remember what it is it's it's one of those books it was written in like i don't know probably 1930 or 40 and it was talking about like some of the deer stuff and you read it and it's like well yeah like and it's like it's funny how ahead of time some of these people were without right. any of the tools and technologies that we have today. explaining it in their way without using the modern jargon yeah like how they how they hunted and how it worked yep yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot of great books like you know, that en woodcock book he's mm-hmm. like 50 years a hunter or something but there's like you can learn a lot from those books mm-hmm. goes and, back to the woodsmanship stuff right that's all those guys knew they didn't know they were doing anything special they just knew how to succeed yeah that's wow that's really cool yeah i i think that you know a lot of the people that get caught up in in today's stuff especially and we're, we're guilty of it too is like you overanalyze so much stuff because of what's at your fingertip basically and what you know from a map or from a camera or, or whatever it might be and you know, the bottom line is like just getting out there and kind of going with your gut and and knowing what you know a bear or a deer does and and being able to say okay they're probably going to do this so i need to do this and you know it's all about encounters at that point yeah, yeah. it's all about just being out there and uh, i mean we have friends too that won't hunt because they're not getting stuff on trail cameras or cell cameras and it's like all right man just get out there because <laughs> do like, that yeah I did that. Oh. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this friend. Yeah. Yeah, but I do that. A great example. Saturday, the day he killed that buck, I was out hunting too, and I saw 15 deer, five small bucks. Uh, I had four cameras up on this. It's less than 30 acre property, like 28 acres. Um, four cameras up. I saw 15 deer total. I got one picture 
on my cameras. Yeah. And I'm watching the deer and I'm like, they're not like the cameras set up on trail intersections, but they're browsing and they're not, they're just not doing what you think. But yet there's, you know, if I was just watching those cameras and that was determining if I'm going to go out or not, it's like, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have saw those deer. I wouldn't have known where those bucks were showing up in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're missing so much. And I get it. Like some people, I don't want to pressure them. I don't want to put my scent in there. It's like, you got to get out there. If you have a good entrance and exit strategy, if you're playing the wind right, like just be out there. You learn so much more just watching and observing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, cell cams are awesome. We use a ton of them. Uh, We love them, but it's just like an inventory tool you get. You know, yeah. So. I mean, that's what we keep coming back to is like, <clears throat> I'm guilty of over hunting my cameras for a, a long time and finally trying to break out of that. Um, you know, but it, it really comes down to like, for me, I'm trying to use it more of a survey tool. Like, is there a buck right. in an area that I want to kill? And, and you get that one picture. Like, okay, I'm good. I know yeah, what I he's to in know. there. Yeah. He's in there. At least I know that he's there. I just don't because I've wasted years of my life hunting ghost. You know, deer that I was like, I know he, he had been here, you know, where I saw him in the summer, like back where, mm-hmm. you know, where I hunted growing up. I mean, dude, I would watch all of those bucks all summer. And so it was like, okay, I'm going to, I know he's there. I'm going to hunt. That deer was long gone, you know, a week or two before yeah. season started and never showed back up. It depends a lot on like your objective too. It's so like, <clears throat> are you guys targeting specific deer like in Pennsylvania or like, what is the objective? Like a certain yeah. age class, certain deer? Th- this year, this year I was able to. So I, I think I had cameras on probably six six different properties leading up to the opening day and just that the one property where to kill that one on that was the only one that was consistently getting three deer that were probably three to four years old so i just went with that one and it, and it worked out but mm-hmm. yeah g- generally i mean we try to get like a th- any a three-year-old will do is from from where we're at yeah we're really not we get into the, the trapping no, and there's so many other things that we love there's to no do. like size there's not a size that we're going after or an age um we get like we love finding new properties, getting permission to these properties, putting cameras up. We find big deer all the time. Um, I'm just not gonna wait for that big deer. Like if I get a two and a half year old, three year old, it's like, okay, I'm gonna shoot this thing. Like, that's fine with me. I'm not gonna wait. Um, yeah, the, the scouting and the getting new properties is my favorite part. By it's so yeah. exciting, it's so exciting. Like yeah. I, I killed a deer on Saturday, Sunday morning, where were we? Yeah. We were in West Virginia. Yeah, right. And, you know, we hit a bunch of, I had some, some trapping permissions from years past and, and hit some public and it just like tearing through this new territory, like miles and miles of new territory, mm-hmm. just seeing like, okay, like what can we do down here now? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, just, I think that's yeah, it. Getting on a new property is so exciting. And then like hunting it for the first time. That's yeah. so cool. Like, um, it just, I'm not big on, I don't think Eric is either, but like hunting the same farm over and over again, the same stands, even if you're moving stands around the same property, it's like, Mm -hmm. we just want to see new places. We just want to explore new places. And, um, that's what, yeah, that's what's fun. You chased the big albino though for a few years, huh? The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy and Stealth Cam Trail Cameras. Cell cams, cell cams, cell cams. What an evolution the industry has seen. And we've experienced personally over the past five, ten, you know, whatever cameras were invented, right? It's like, man, it's totally changed the way that we inventory deer, pattern deer, and ultimately the decisions that we make when we're going out to hunt. They're a serious piece of the puzzle. And, and uh, you know, that information is invaluable for us. We trust the Muddy and Stealth Cams, you know, together to be able to, to collect any of that information. Yeah, I mean, as an admitted trail cam addict, you know, I've definitely been guilty of of under hunting places or relying too heavily on that information that's come in that said it's an invaluable tool to the overall management plan and strategy that i have for my own properties or even hunting public land it doesn't matter we have a finite amount of time in going out and hunting so when you and i are after a particular class or quality of deer usually a mature buck we can't waste time hunting an area where that deer doesn't exist. And those cell cams provide that information that allow us to spend the time in the area with the highest chance to accomplish our goals. I say it all the time, man. You can't kill them if they're not there. That's it. So right now, any of our listeners can use uh, code HUNTER20 to get 20% off either muddy or stealth cameras. Uh, we're certainly going to be taking advantage of that, and we hope you guys do too. Yep, check out Stealth Cam and Muddy. I would, I would never shoot that buck because as soon as I... That buck was almost nine years old. Yeah, you uh, knew. The, the one I was talking about was a different deer. Sorry, I didn't mean to I, divert. I just, or, no, it was the same deer. It was the same, same deer. Um, it was oh, like, it was? Yeah, nine-year-old deer. Um, oh. Because you, you, you were sending me pictures for at least six years yeah. of that buck. Yeah. 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 And yes. I remember you showed me at the gym one day, like, yeah. video of this. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's crazy, dude. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. had no idea it was the same deer. No, I kind of pinpointed where I thought his 
bedroom was, like where he was hanging out. And I went looking for sheds the one time. And you got a permission in his bedroom. Well, that's what you I did. Got a yeah, I got. Spot, and then- I went and knocked on the door and like, hey, could I um, trapping? Could I trap some coyotes here? Uh, but can I hang some cameras up too to get some see where the coyotes are running? But I can wanted I trap to, that big white deer. With I, my yeah, boat? I, I was the, the cameras for catching him. But yeah, um, and I went the one time to look for sheds, and uh, I looked up like right where I thought he would be. I walked in and just looked up, and it was just like this spectacle bedding up on the hillside, just looking at me. You literally found his bed. I found his bed. Yeah, and he's still holding full rack, and he got up and ran onto a different property, and I was like, well, at least I. I felt good, like I pinpointed exactly knew, where he yeah. was, yeah, and where he was betting was like a perfect vantage point, like well, for. Wasn't there like in, in the like, uh, there was some sort of like a, a agreement or like a handshake that you like people weren't hunting this deer. Yeah, right? and I was part of that. Like I wasn't, I wasn't going to kill him because I knew if I had the opportunity, and I did, they would have burned my house. There down. were so, so many lot, people's a lot of kids that love seeing them. A lot of people yeah. had it. It was a pet. It was like it was, it was basically nine years old. Yeah. a nine year old buck, albino buck in Pennsylvania. That's that like yeah. was also massive. It's a yeah, freaking huge. unicorn, and everybody was in on it. It's not like everybody knew. Okay, this is just something that we want to have here because it was just every time I would see him, it was just like the coolest thing just how to did, see how him. How did they get that message out? Like, how did you like become a part of this? Okay, okay, we're going to pass. It's not that big of a community. No, it's, and it's not like, uh, we're just kind of living out there and people on the road, like you get to know them, farmers talking to them. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, every time like I would bring it up to somebody, it'd be like, you're not going to shoot that. Right. And I'm like, well, I guess not. I'm not going to shoot him because, <laughs> I mean, uh, no, yeah, I'll right. Try no. my best. Yeah. Um, I never actually saw him like come past my stand. I would just like encounter him different times. I'm just so surprised nobody poached him earlier. Well, yeah, I mean, we're yeah. cl- we're a classic state for classic that. state, and the with to- spotlighting and everything. One of the first times I saw him, I took the boys um, spotting, and the first time it was 40 yards off the road, standing there, just with a doe. It was like peak rut, and like my kids were in the car. I'm like, hey, take a good look at this because you're never, never going to see, see this again. again. Yeah, and it was just there, and I'm like, I'm 40 yards off the road watching this thing for probably half an hour. He's like, I want McDonald's. Yeah, right. <laughs> Other cars are driving by, and I'm just thinking, like, this is still this buck has been doing this for years, and no one just drove by and just popped because it. Because it's not, I mean, it's rural, too. Oh, yeah, it's rural. Um, it's not, like, neighborhood stuff. Um, it's out there, farm country. But uh, and then, yeah, some guy ended up poaching it. Local guy, too, which is crazy. Oh, yeah, right kinda, down. kind of yeah. turned it into, he shot it, tried to say he shot it in season, right? Yeah, like but it was legal. between archery and rifles, and he shot it. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. So what what did happen? Well, first question: Did people for sure pass it? Like, do you do you know of people that were like, "Hey, I was out." Oh yeah, the I, guy that I got permission from to put up cameras and where I saw him the fir- the buck that first time, um, he hunted this property and he would pass it up. Um, neighbors they would hunt that property or their properties and they would never shoot it. So everyone was kind of in agreement, like, "Yeah, we're not yeah. killing this buck." Yeah. Which I was fine for. I was just like, this is yeah. such a spectacle. Like, yeah, it's just crazy. cool to have around. Yeah, yeah. Like, to show my kids, like, to be like, yeah. It's cool this- for a community to have something Absolutely, like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I was I was fine. Like, I don't have to kill this deer. Um, but, yeah, I was just, it was sad. I was hoping to maybe find him eventually, like, dying of old age or whatever, or find mm-hmm. his sheds. I never ended up finding his sheds There's either. probably still some sheds out there. Yeah. I would assume and so. It, it was some thick area, and I was crawling through uh, the first time I went out there trying to find his sheds. But um, I did get a picture of him. After he dropped that time I yeah, saw I him. That. And so I was back there like all week the next week trying to find it and I couldn't find it. Needle anything. in the haystack, yeah. man. Yeah. So, so what did happen? Is it kind of all out on the table now? Like we know. Yeah, they, a guy killed it um, between archery and rifle. I don't right, know. Which in Pennsylvania, if anybody's listening, doesn't know, gap. like we stop. We so stop. So we right. stop for archery and then you have bear season, Thanksgiving. Yeah, a couple weeks. And then rifle kicks in. Which that makes it even worse. Like, it was between the seasons. Like if he would have shot it during a season, it's like, okay, it was legal because this guy is kind of new. He was, he's only a couple years in the area, but he knows he knew the deal. Like he was up on the deal and like, he didn't even kill it during the season, which was really got everyone worked up. What did he shoot it with? I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. Crossbow. I I would guarantee a crossbow. (laughs) I, I know people that like know him or knew him and like I knew him right didn't realize right exactly yeah. and they're like hey we can't be friends anymore because yeah. like, then they like stuff his like mailbox with like guts and stuff and just like I don't know about about that. What? <laughs> Wait, let's change the topic right <laughs> now <laughs> Yeah. No, but there were a lot of people really fired up. He's uh, not from that community though. Like no, I don't think guy. so. Um, I assume he's not at that community anymore. No, he's there. I drive past him all the time wow. every day. I drive. What, past what him. was the penalty? I don't know. Um, I know for sure, like that next day, the game commission was at his place for a while. Um, I'd imagine just, you know, 
License revocation, trophy Fines. replacement fees, yeah. things like that. Hand slap on her yeah. wrist. Yeah, yeah. he's probably out there doing it again. It's That's a shame. Sick. Yeah, it's yeah. A shame. You know what's kind of interesting, and and I I I guess growing up, like where we hunted, I dude, I never saw an albino like anywhere. No, no. Uh, I see a bunch down here. Like I, see, I, I, see I a have, lot of them too. I have two, three behind my house right now. A buck and oh, two wow. fawns. That's awesome. Um, and I had a piebald eight point for quite a few years back I've there. seen pie balls before but, but yeah never I've got I've never seen a pie ball but I've seen plenty of albinos I've got, we've got an albino four point back there which Harlan is really itching <laughs> so you want to and I don't shoot. know if I really want him to or not yeah but he's itching mm -hmm. uh, and then I've got two albino fawns back there too so it, you know it's it's a recessive gene right oh, yeah so, well, I mean, the crazy it, thing is um, I wasn't seeing that buck for a while and this is right before he got poached. So I didn't know if like he was alive or what. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wonder if this buck's still around here. And I was driving to work that morning in the same place that the first time I saw the albino buck, I was like thinking, I wonder if he's still alive in this albino fawn across the street. And I was like, oh shit, that's like wow. a sign. So yeah, it's, it's probably, you know, his offspring. It's in there. Yeah, it's in the there. genes are around here. Yeah. yeah it's, it's weird to see. Um, and I haven't seen, well, I guess it's been a, about a week since I've seen the buck. I saw the fawn like two nights ago um, behind the house it was just out. And, the twin to it is not albino yeah uh which is kind of neat to see but yeah i mean they're they're out there um just rare i mean it's funny because you get places like i think it's somewhere in wisconsin it's illegal like they've got a huge population of albinos but it's illegal to, to shoot them but um, if you took a poll in pennsylvania a lot of people think it's illegal yeah well, and then it goes back to everyone's just like it's not right. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, but every, you'll be cursed. And yeah, nothing. it's oh, all yeah, like that's what they think. That's it's the bad, old curse. Luck, yeah. Bad luck. Yeah. Yeah. And I never like thought. How do you about feel that. about that? Like, I, if, I never thought about it. it's not. I'm not superstitious. I'm a little bit stitious. I'm not superstitious. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, right. But, just yeah. a little stitious. Just a little, a little bit. Stitious. Yeah. Uh, but no, I was like, but I was just all about being in that agreement. Like, okay, if everyone's sure. a collective, I want to see this thing. I want to see how long. It, that was my thing. I want to see how long it would have lived. Oh, like, dude, it was a big box. Oh too. yeah. But and was there it was any circumstance where okay, if you're hunting a farm three miles away and the thing happens to be way out of his range, <laughs> then would you have shot it? <laughs> No, you wouldn't have. There's no extenuating circumstances. If you, if you knew what deer it was, you wouldn't have. Uh, no, it's because I kind of promised people that I wouldn't shoot it. Yeah. I think what the question if it was is limping. Like, would you shoot? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you shoot a? Would you shoot an albino? I don't know, because uh, I probably have a chance to do I it would. this year. I'd shoot a doe probably. Do, yeah. uh, depending on the but the chance, just the chances of me having a mature albino buck in the sure. range of my lifetime is, uh, I probably will Slim. never have to like make the decision, but. Oh, I would. Yeah? I'm, yeah. I'm sending it, yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Just got to send it. Just send it. You, you, I don't know. You would think about it. Now, well, now, because I, like, I have some behind the house. In, in this situation, I absolutely would have done the same thing you did. I yeah. said, no, I, a community decision here. We're not going to shoot the thing. I think that's super mm -hmm. cool. But if I, just on our mm -hmm. farm or something, if I have an albino, a mature... I'm not going to shoot like a, I'm not going to lower my standards because he's an albino. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. So if he was 125 inches, you wouldn't shoot him? It depends how old he was. Oh, uh, okay. Age, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come what on. If you said he was three, yeah, age too. yeah. If he was I mean, three year old, you wouldn't shoot him. The so, hard part is this state, because like I mean, no, I a, a three year old buck <laughs> in Pennsylvania is like that's it. That's the epitome. Yeah, of, I mean, we're, you're gonna see a four and five. Like I've got an older buck behind the house now, but I mean, most of the deer I'm seeing are three. If I see a four year old in Pennsylvania, he's for sure dead. Yeah. yeah. Like if it's not me, it's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, because like uh, that um that uh, piebald got to be, he's probably three. He was a three year old eight point. And he was cool as hell. Like, just like I'm a split down the middle type. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty well. But yeah, I mean, you get a three-year-old buck in Pennsylvania. Although it's gotten better. Like, I mean, up on the mountain, like I've seen big deer. I mean, I killed that deer up there. Like, they're they're around. It's just very few and far between. Yeah, we. I mean, we get pictures of <laughs> four-year-olds plus remember that every we saw, year. Remember we used to, uh, before we had kids, we did a ton of, like, deep woods ground hunting mm -hmm. on public land. Like, we would do, it was kind of like an offshoot of how. On the mountain, Of, right? like, fox calling. We, we'd yep. walk, we'd, we'd do a calling setup for half an hour and then move 200 yards, do it again. And this one setup, we saw the biggest buck that either of us have probably ever seen. I remember you guys telling me like, about six, that. Like, it was almost like. We look at each other. Did we see that? Did we yeah. really see that? It was with a doe, right? It was with a. Mm -hmm. It was tending a doe. Like it wouldn't. It wouldn't leave her. And we jumped that buck. We didn't call it in. Right. We jumped. Yeah. We it was on the way to the next setup. If we were just like somewhere around there, just set up and called, it might have stood up and like walked out, and we could have got a shot at. But we were just like walking to the next spot when we jumped it. But like they both saw this was the, not not that long ago, right? No. 
Eh, probably five, five or six, or six years. years. I, think I remember hearing about. Yeah, that. yeah. but uh, he was tending that day. He wouldn't. He wouldn't look at us. He was just looking at the, the doe. Was looking at us like, oh, what are they doing? And then he was just looking. at I her. mean, but that big. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, realistically, probably one sixty, but it's one sixty. I would say bigger than that. That's yeah. one sixty. I would say I would say bigger than that. Then bigger frame wise. Bigger frame and heavier. Bigger frame heavier. I mean, that's oh, that's yeah. one sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been bigger than 160. But it was just cool to see. And that was public land. Like, people were way back, back there. Yeah. It, way it back. It was way back past the last gate. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he never, came, saw it, never saw it again. He came off public when I killed him. Yeah. He was bedded on public. The one I had hunted up there for years was in this, probably in the mid-70s. And he was on public a lot. Yeah. They're in there. It's oh, yeah. just, I mean, but they got to get to five or six years old. Yeah. I, um, I know some guys, and since I've been here, I've been in this area about 11 years now, and I've met... There's a couple of guys that I think I told you before that they they do it almost every year on public land. I'm talking like 150 to 180 every year. Just unknown people. Yeah, yeah I know a guy like, too, like that lives right down the road from me that I got uh, to know just through trapping and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he owns like a bunch of acreage, uh, but you walk into his house and it's just like 150 and up, just like yeah. wall, him and his wife both every year. And, and you just don't hear about them. You just don't. You don't know. Yeah, but there's they don't want you to hear about. Yeah, like them. they don't. They don't like this one guy lives a half a mile from me. Like he'll never send a picture to anybody. But like he, he just, just has it. them hanging. He has you know a little single wide, and it's every square foot of wall is covered with antler. But they gotta tell somebody. You you can only kill so many deer like that before you want to tell know. people. I'm telling us. But, but, but that not, might yeah. be the difference between these people and everybody else. I'm not saying you gotta can, post it to social media. Yeah. yeah. But you know, yeah. I'd be out on the street being like, hey, yeah. Come in here. Yeah, I gotta show showing people. You hunt, right? Yeah. Come in here. Well, he did bring me into his house. Yes. So that's one there person he told exactly. about it. I, yeah, I think, um, you know, it's weird because the pressure in those places has definitely decreased um, compared to like when even we were in high school doing, our, yeah. I mean, dude, we would have drove out that mountain. Like, and, yeah. and yeah. I mean, any one year old would have been smoked. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely changed from a pressure from a <clears throat> from a huntability standpoint. Um, you know, obviously antler restrictions have come in a big place since we were in high school. I mean, we were kind of right there at the end of, of mm-hmm. high school when they came in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird to see because, you know, growing up, like I was always under the impression that like, you know, hunt around home, that's where the big bucks are. Um, and there still are, but I mean, you go into some of these remote places in PA, even when we went up with Steve Shirk and those guys, I mean, there are some giants up there. There's not a lot of One them. One or two, yeah. It's, and it's hard to find them, but they're, they exist up yeah. in the in the mountains and stuff. Even in Kentucky. like They're, just di- they're different animals. They're not like farm country. No. Yeah. You know, you get back up into the mountains, it's like they're, they're a different animals. Those deer, are, they don't see people. Yeah, not that's, much. That's yeah. why they react the way they do. And you probably have one shot at those guys, and then it's... You know, yeah. fairy dust. I don't, I don't think they're nearly like as as patternable either. I mean, I could be. I don't do a whole lot of it, but like the ones that I have like uh, encountered or experienced, like in farm country, it's like they're they're pretty okay. You know, here, here's the bedding thicket. Here's like that's where they're going to eventually. Like in the mountain, it just seems like there's just, there's so much like so much similar. Like this ridge, okay. Every ridge is they're lined up like this, and leeward side and side with acorns, leeward <laughs> side to side yeah. with acorns, mm-hmm. yeah. and they can just move. 20 miles yeah. each way and get the same habitat. Yeah, exactly. The, the, a lot of those deer that I'll see on the mountain, they'll end up moving in the next three weeks. They'll be moving. I'll get them on my camera behind my house and they'll have moved a mile and a half, two miles and they won't stay, but for a week or two, they'll, yeah. they'll run that right. circle, you know? Um, but it's weird. Cause like uh, that deer, I've got a giant, like three-year-old in Kentucky behind my cabin, not nice. even on the new farm. monster, yeah. like nice. months. I'll show you a picture. And, What's so hard for me to understand is like almost how do they get that bit? There's not good food. Like it's mountains. Mm -hmm. There's acorns and there's brows and that's it. There, there isn't any, there's no crops. There's no high protein, this high protein, that it's just natural food. There's some people that are like six, six and they don't do anything, you know? And that's what always comes back to that kind of comparison. That's what like drives me crazy is like, I don't uh, seen some of these deer on the mountain, um, or like this deer in Kentucky, it's like. A lot of it is genetics too, because I was gonna like, say, do you think it's yeah for sure? Because I would see even at my farm, like we have uh, this year more than most years mature bucks that just don't score anything, you know? Man, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's just genetics because they have just all the food they genetics. can want. They've got the age on them, and they're just yeah. 140, one forty, you know, if yeah. that. And then yeah, them. you just have to get the age on them. Mm-hmm. And I do think um, 
the cool thing about some of these bigger areas, the mountains and things like that, um, these deer will definitely move and leave, but it, I used to think that they were dead. Like when I didn't see a deer for a year, I'm like, he's dead. You know, he got killed, whatever. We were ever confident in our camera survey. Yeah. Skills, and then you know? like I've recently had deer for, you know, two, three years. And then all of a sudden it's like, uh, and look back, I'm like, that's that deer. Mm -hmm. You know, he was two, he's six now. And he came uh, back. I had a buck this morning show up and I was like, I don't know who that is. He looks mature. I look, and so we've got every picture ever. I've got 30 cameras on my place. Look through all of last year. I'm like, I don't, I don't think it's any of these yeah. deer. And I go to the year before. I'm like, oh yeah. I was like, there's this year that was there a lot. What did he do last year? I don't know, but I'm pretty confident it's him. I mean, the yeah. age would make sense. The location makes sense, except where was he last year? I, I don't know. Just yeah. My biggest archery buck that I've, I've ever got right behind my house. I had him at one. I had him at two. He was gone at three. And then I killed him at four. Like he never came through once. And I had the thing covered with cameras and yeah. same thing. It is super fun though. Like when you, when you branch out of just like your core hunting areas to be able to, if you get the chance to see one of those deer, like out of where you're used to seeing them, you're like, oh, holy cow. Like I've got one of those right now. I know where this deer falls for the most part. And I'm also fortunate to have permission, uh, where he summers. And I just, it, I didn't realize it right away, but this year I'm like, that's the same deer that was like falling over there. And it's like, yeah. it's at least two and a half miles. And so it's cool to just see, like, it gives you a kind of hope. You're oh, like, yeah. you're like, oh, they just, they go somewhere else. Like, of course they do. You know, that, just, that same idea that the deer that I just mentioned, my biggest archery buck, the year that I killed him, it was, I killed him like end of October, but I remember it was probably o mid October and it was a nice warm evening. So I was, I was going for a run. I was running from my house. I was a couple, I was a mile and a half, two miles away running up this big hill <clears throat> and there was cornfields on both sides like at a steep angle so I could see the edge of the cornfield. And I saw that buck. I'm like, what are you doing? It's middle of October. You're walking on the edge of a cornfield. Like you're supposed to be behind my house. Yeah. Like that's how you get killed. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, but he, you know, luckily he didn't. He, he came shifted. back over to my place, but mm -hmm. I think he was that, a mile and a half away. I think that shift is what throws people off. Like, um, and it probably is like, if you're in your area, like, I don't know how those deer shift in your area. Cause it's, you have so much ag that eventually gets cut and you've got limited cover. When you get to these other spots that are like all cover, I think these deer are shifting miles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's an analogy that just came to me. I don't, I don't know why I really like this. It's kind of like we're playing hide and seek like in, in our house and like we're, we're searching and they're playing in the whole neighborhood. Yeah. And like we realize that they can go outside, but it's like they well, know you're searching for them in, in your house. Why yeah. would they? Yeah. Yeah. You know, as, as far as that's a good analogy, pressure compares. How, like how far bears move every year? Like if I you know. see any of that data, there's hundreds of miles literally from new york to maryland in, in like a in matter a month. of day yeah just in very a month they'll just time. boom straight wow. line just never stop well and i mean that's what you have to think with some of these deers like you know if they don't have to move they probably aren't going to move that much but if they have to move why not they they're, do though they do though like there's so many factors i think that we that social pressure or social uh dynamic is i think a big one that we it's don't the unknown. understand it's like yeah they're just it's probably just another deer's in there that they don't want to be around. Like those big mountain bucks don't want to be around anything. Mm -hmm. Like when they need to be around a doe, they will, but they don't want to be social. They don't want to be around those deer. Yeah. Either they that or they're seeking out a specific doe that they know mm -hmm. comes into heat every, yep. you know, specific. And then they go back on their own. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird. But I think that's where, you know, you guys talk about putting a lot of boots on the ground. It's cool to get up in some of those areas and like you just end up tripping across an area like there's a big buck up here. We do a lot of that, like with trap. That's probably my favorite part about trapping is just continuing to be outside all winter. You know, into into that's the early, best time to be into out there early spring, and that's stuff. when that's when I, that's when we've seen some of the you biggest the bucks most, yeah. we've ever seen. Like when you that that once I remember up we we were we were at a state park trapping a hayfield, and he's pounding in a metal stake, and this is right. It was right after archery season closed. He's pounding in a stake with a hammer, and a buck comes charging across the field to that sound. Within bow range. Yeah, within yeah. bow range. And I, I had my, uh, I think I had a video camera some of the time, but like, I, I don't know where that went, but just ran right in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd hunt it all. I don't know if we got a deer that year or not, but the just amount of box and deer we've seen while checking traps, and especially traps. at night, too. Like when you're out at night with a flashlight, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll walk right up to you. They don't have yeah. any fear of that. Do you guys find a bunch of sheds when you're out like that? Not at um, night. <laughs> oh, not at night. Uh, yeah, yeah trapping season. Yeah. yeah. We find stuff. Yeah. There was, there was one time I was a snow covered field. I was going to put in like a, a hay set, but I had to get down to the dirt to bed the trap. I'm shoveling. I'm, I pick a spot in a field, six inches of snow. First shovel scoop, I throw up some snow, and underneath that, there's a shed right there. What? That's, yeah. Wow. Jeez. But those months, December, 
through February, when we're out there almost every day checking traps, setting, and there's nobody else out there because yeah. all like the deer hunters, they're done like with nothing to do. Shed hunters haven't started. Yeah, and, and that's like the best. It's so cool because number one, all the foliage is down, so mm -hmm. you got you can see everything. You're out there every day. You're seeing tracks in the snow, not just deer, but like predators, everything. So you're getting a sense of like what's really happening there in these months. And that's the coolest thing. And not having anybody around either. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy. Man, Jared, we probably have been using Muddy products for at least 10 years now. It's a long time, dude. It's been a long time. And I can remember when it was simply just safety harnesses and camera arms of all things. And, you know, that's evolved to where you and I both have a bunch of Muddy box blinds as well. I would say a bunch. But yeah, they, they've come a long way. And certainly the box blinds are, are huge. Shot that buck over your shoulder out of a Muddy box by a couple years ago. The harness and, and all of the other safety accessories really are, are a major component of, of what Muddy offers for me. Um, you know, we've had some injuries in the past, you know, some, some tree stand accidents. This, this is all back before we were using, uh, you know, frankly, harnesses, mm -hmm. uh, the lineman's belt while we're hanging stuff and the safe lines. I have those in every single one of, uh, you know, our fixed tree stands now. And uh, so we really have made safety a priority. Uh, that, that's a big deal for us. And, uh, you know, Muddy has everything we need for that. Yeah. And I think uh, the cool thing about Muddy is anyone listening to the Hunter podcast can save 20% using the code Hunter20. That's H U N T R 2 0. Uh, anything that you can see on the Muddy Outdoors store online, use that code, save yourself 20% for this hunting season. Go Muddy. Are you guys trapping mainly coyotes? Everything. Everything. Water too? Every, everything. Yeah. Everything. For like just recreational, yeah. purely recreational? Are you guys selling uh, the hides? Or? We, well, we tan all our own furs now. So a few years ago, we started tanning our own fur because the fur market it pretty much doesn't exist anymore. Right. So um, a lot of people get into it, you know, take it to a... Uh, like fur a post fur or buyer. somebody or send it up to NAF or whatever but I guess they'll go is there like uh is it TNT fur uh, have you they, heard of them she passed away she passed they away yeah. okay yeah. what's the other one right up the road uh, uh Westmoreland fur, fur post, but yeah. they didn't yeah. buy anything last year so oh really yeah. still I, I took some supplies. stuff to them as a kid yeah, yeah mm -hmm. there's uh dude that one that ran TNT fur, fur post she was a Teresa, tough lady Teresa, listen she taught me she she was in there flushing beavers the first time I ever been chugging bush light yeah not only me but she taught so many people around here like how to skin, how to flesh. Yep. I used to take her stuff like on the carcass, like just, she's like, no, you're gonna skin this and you're gonna flesh and you're gonna do it like right here, like a man. And so she put me in the back. She's like, here's a bunch of like start fleshing. And I've fleshed on that board before oh, too. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, but that shit, I mean, there's hundreds of guys that grew up in that. And it was just so cool going out there, trappers are around, you know, oh, she's like, the crushing smell beer. Of oh, dried yeah. leather. Yeah, right. Oh, drives me crazy. I for me, I there's a smell of it's the beer and like there was yeah. the musk. It was the beaver musk. Yeah, as yeah. well was there was like all these beaver laying all over yeah. the floor. Fox yeah. piss everywhere. It's she awesome. was all just bitching because she's yep. got like six of them ahead of her. What's you know? that community look like now? The it's, trapping community. Yeah, local sailing like that doesn't really occur anymore. It's mm -hmm. you'll get it and you'll ship it to Canada. So. Is there a post still like uh, Westmoreland? I guess is where Westmoreland. Like, yeah. I don't know if they they didn't buy last year. I don't know if they even buy anymore. Like you might have to drive an hour. Supposedly, or more. beaver prices might be up a little bit. And coyotes yeah. the last couple of years have been okay. Coyotes are down again. Beavers are the down, only thing yeah. that you could like. Is well, it because of demand? Yeah, because of the show Yellowstone. Everybody wants cowboy <laughs> hats, and they're trimmed with sheared beaver fur. That's the only reason that the beaver market is up right now. Oh, really? So the better what the local beavers. So I mean, who out. was who was back when like you were getting into this thing? Who was the buyer market? Like where were these first? Russia going? and China, yeah. and you know we've had a lot of trouble with. So they shut both off countries buying. the last couple yeah. of years. So they. They're not China got in trouble one year. They weren't following like the the CITES rules and stuff, and they weren't allowed to buy for a while. Now they don't want anything to do with us, and same with Russia. So what do they do for their furs and stuff? Uh, I guess they just fur farms. Synthetic. Yeah, I don't know synthetic. Yeah, or, uh, they, I mean, there's a lot of fur in Russia, and they have a mm -hmm. lot. Of, they have a lot of government paid trappers that do that. Interesting. So, but that's just completely killed the demand, right? Because I would assume the supply isn't that good, right? It seems like trapper numbers have decreased. There, yeah, there's so many ripple effects from from. Well, people that. are pretty efficient at it now i mean yeah right the, i think now the people that are in it are very efficient yeah and getting into it there's just not the numbers anymore are you can you share like how, how many coyotes are you guys trapping in a year uh, like 20 to 30 a year okay yeah i mean that's that's up because a decade ago it was four to five a year wow yeah so it just, it's is that your efficiency and or access it's just more it's coyotes both. too more and more coyotes so it's all running all less, all steel. less competition and cable, cable restraints. restraints. Yeah. yeah, that's probably my favorite thing to use. 
They're like a non lethal a lot a non lethal snare. Oh, you run mainly so, those. That, well, in the in the late season, yeah. Okay. After but, after Christmas, you can. Dude, start I've got using. a. There's a lady uh, that used to. She was a groundskeeper for my grandparents, mm-hmm. and li- she's lives in Ohio. Name's Martha. Yeah. Tough lady, just like you know Teresa, and she taught me how to trap. Uh-huh. And it, there was one year. Uh, I'm gonna say it was. I don't know, 10 years ago, she got 143 coyotes in a season, all, oh, yeah. all cable restraints. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all she did. You know I mean? She would just, yeah. she'd work the farm and she would run around and like, that's a ton of coyotes, 143 wow. coyotes. I mean, when you look into it, there's guys that you'll never hear of that are catching 150 coyotes, 200 coyotes, or more Not than that. Not in Pennsylvania. It's Not in Pennsylvania. Like Midwest. Ohio, so Midwest. Yeah, the further, it's just yeah. like, you know, generally what you think of the size of deer, the further west you go. Yeah. To a lot a of guys, point. just like deer hunting, a lot of guys go out west just to trap. Sure. Um, really? Oh, yeah. That's like a big thing. Going out to Kansas. Like mm-hmm. Guys go out there. Kansas for, is probably the holy grail of catching numbers. Not quality of coyotes, but I mean, numbers. we hear so many coyotes yeah. when we bow hunt Kansas. Dude, I heard a pile in North Dakota. Did you? I had a lot of them, yeah. I've got a bunch in on my Kentucky farm you guys can have at them. A couple of years ago, we just wanted to really catch fox. That's all we wanted to catch. And then just like we're setting for fox, but we just keep catching coyotes and coyotes. And that's kind of what it is now. It's when, like. When did you guys start trapping? How old? I started trapping. My dad had me, I think I was six. Yep. Wow. I, I remember like my, I remember I just put these rubber hip boots on with regular socks. Got down a brush crack. It, it, was, it was always Thanksgiving morning that water <laughs> trapping opened. And that's what we started with. And my feet were frozen. He's Muscrats. like, he's like, Muscrats. come Muscrats. more traps, come more traps, come more traps. And I couldn't feel from like my waist down. And then we go home and go to Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 Muscrats. I didn't start trapping until high school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, cause you guys were, I mean, you were into it, but you weren't that into it when we were hunting and stuff right. in, in high school. Yeah. That's when we just, I just started getting into it then. But yeah, it's just something it's, it's almost like an obsession now where kind of like bow hunting. It's awesome. dude. It's awesome. It's like, if I'm not, if it's trapping season and I don't have at least a couple traps out, it's like, what am I doing? Like, I was into it before I was into hunting for sure. I think yeah. I was looking forward to hunting. Like I knew that was coming, but I was like, I couldn't hunt until I was 12. Right. So, and my dad always had uh, like his big pile of muskrat traps hanging mm-hmm. in the basement. And so like, I started like, I was like, what, what are those? Like, can I, and then I, he had a couple like one and a half and stuff or one, cause he was mainly water trapper yeah. when he was in high school and stuff. He had the basket and stuff. And so I was like, can I, is this, can I do this? Like, is it legal for me to do this now? So I must've been like, I don't know, nine or 10. And, uh, it's funny, dude. Like we did absolutely everything wrong, but like th- the first trap I ever set. Like I went out and tried to do it myself. So I just like fa- found a crick. I was like, I think I'm trapping for a ra- raccoon. I think. <laughs> so I threw some, just threw some bait like in a corner and then, and of course I caught like a bird, like, a, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so dad's like, well, yeah, you can't, no, you can't, your, vi- your bait can't be visible and stuff. Yeah. And there's l- rules and stuff for that. So he came out and he taught me and did so many good trapping memories. I remember just like, you know, we'd have pistols. I didn't have a pistol. They didn't trust me. He said, yeah, just take this little wooden dial of this yeah. trial and just pop them on the head. You know, it's like, no, no, no. And then the first, no, yeah, the half first an hour is later. Tentative. You're, tentative. you're like, uh, yeah. not yeah. that simple. But, but I do, I distinctly <laughs> remember, dude, the first fox I ever caught was like just uh, probably a, a pinnacle, like one of the, the, the coolest memories yeah. of like a trapping accomplishment. Um, I used to check those traps before school. Uh, on my KLX 110, like a little, a pit yeah. bike. So I was small enough that that was my dirt bike. And we had like, I don't know, it felt like a foot of snow, but it was probably like six or eight inches. And we had set, like I had my raccoon traps and stuff, but then we would set, like I had six or eight Fox traps. I was like, these are the, these are like the premium traps here. And it was the, it was the very last trap on my way back to the house. It was just like a, it was an old goldenrod field. And there was a road that ran down through the middle of it. And we just set a dirt hole, probably like right in the middle. And I remember coming over and I had my a headlight. So it was just my headlight. It was pitch black. And I'm, I guess it did have a pistol by then. I had the <laughs> basket on or a bag or something. And I come over and I see these eyes, you know, b- bouncing yeah. all over, you know, and I'm 10 feet cause it's actively snowing. And I just I th- throw my bike down and I run up to it. I'm so excited. I'm like, you never know how good they're caught and stuff. Right. So I get up to it. I get my, it's a Browning. Right, mm-hmm. Browning twenty, <laughs> my Browning, my Browning twenty two pistol. It's like one of those old, yeah. you know, German whatever. And I missed it three times. <laughs> I was just so excited. I'm just shooting it to the yeah. thing right in front of me, you know, until I finally. Thing was a giant gray fox, though. I mean, it oh, was. Nice. A, I can't remember if it was a male or female, but I was, I was pretty stoked about that. Oh yeah. yeah, that's those are great memories. Gray fox are cool too. They're just they're so cool. They're one of my favorite species to trap for sure. Yeah, um, smart. They can, they can climb trees. They can climb trees. That's all you need to know. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, they're so cat like compared to a red fox. Uh, a gray is very like even the fur, their demeanor, how they hunt even is much more like a cat almost than mm. than a dog. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. Just seeing that difference too. Are you guys still seeing a lot of fox populations around here? 
yeah. low, lower, lower than even in, in 11 years, it's a noticeable decline really? in fox numbers. What, you, what I see a lot is um, when you start seeing a lot of coyotes come in, fox then go. the fox kind of go. That's just a fast meal for a coyote. Because um, we see a lot of fox still behind our place, but I don't see hardly any coyotes. Well, fo- yeah. fox, I mean, they're kind of notorious for they'll move right next to developments because yep. they know the coyotes won't come in that close. Yep. Mm. So it's the what's our what's the bobcat regs here now? One one per year, but yeah. uh, there's there seems to be a lot of them. Seeing a lot Dude, more. We need yeah. a season in Ohio. There's a freaking. Yeah. I, I get a ton of them in my. Yeah, Ohio you guys are Kentucky right on the place. fringe. You'll probably have one really soon. A season? Yeah, yeah. I you're, hope you're, so. You're really we see close. them all the time. Yeah, I think we have a pretty liberal season in Kentucky. Um, I don't know what it exactly is, but I mean, I, I think you're unlimited in Kentucky. I've got a I, lot. I know a guy that catches a bunch. I've got a lot of bobcats. What are the ki- what are the coyote regs here? They're unlimited. Unlimited, unlimited. just like yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No season. Just uh, you can hunt them anytime, but trapping is they have a time frame. For I don't them. like that. I think that you should be able to trap them whenever you want. I think just the concern is probably just like incidental catches. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't. Just from an efficiency side, I mean, <clears throat> you know, especially if you're talking about concerns around, you know, you can't nest, trap them in the nesting. Fall. And, you can if you if or you, I'm sorry, in the spring. If you no. call if you call in a complaint to the the game commission, they can authorize you to do But it's not your, a season. They can authorize on your land you to do what you need to do for your, you know, your livestock, your mm-hmm. protection whatever. Yeah. Or if you have an ADC permit, which we've talked about getting too, then you Animal can, damage. Yeah, do whatever you want mm-hmm. anytime. Um And does that go with the trapper or does that go on the land? With the trapper. the trapper. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of one way around it. Uh, but Kansas, too. There's tons of bobcats out there. Lots. Yeah. Yeah. We see a lot of bobcats, a lot of coyotes. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've got decent probably populations at my Ohio place, but it's like here. Like, I, it's rolling hills and timber, and it's not like big fields or anything. We, my dad shoots at at least five coyotes a season. Really? Archery season. Yeah, he'll hit one or two. I don't visually, <laughs> yeah. I don't visually see him very often. I shot two out of one set i had five come in and i shot one and i kissed the other one back in yep i put scary oak you you shot at one in kansas yep missed him yeah is yep. it coming through quick they two all, they're them. always coming through quick. Two of no them it was just an, it was an, i mean yes but it was like an awkward mm-hmm. 35 and it's shot. also kind of awkward when the target is you know a fifth the size of your normal target it's like wait a minute yep. yeah yeah yep. you draw back on it yeah yeah for sure they react it's like fast. have you ever shot a squirrel like it's kind of tough to wrap your brain around from a tree stand aiming at a squirrel oh, yeah. with a bow. They, they are cool. Like, as pissed as I am when I see them, I'm like, freaking coyotes, you know? Yeah. I, I'm like, an admire. I'm like, that's a cool, that's a wild dog, you know? It's mm-hmm. just like, they're kind of, yeah. they're cool creatures. They're pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have, like, the fact that they legitimately have, like, 10% gray wolf DNA in the eastern coyotes is... Oh, dude, they're it's huge. Really, it's really cool to, to think that my, it's in uh, there somewhere. My buddy and I tr- caught one in Ohio. It was 55 pounds for female. A, yeah. a, like a giant. I'm so glad you didn't say 75 pounds. Yeah, I would have walked, walked out of here. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was legit. That's, so that's a German say. Shepherd. That's yeah. le- that's that's reasonable. It was the biggest coyote yeah. I've ever. It was a legitimate yeah. 55 pound. I forget what we weighed it on. I think it was either our deer scale or. So, I mean, maybe it was. Awful. I mean, what do you think? Like you hear a lot of people now talking about like these coyotes pack hunting and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, we see tracks like you no. said. We're always out yeah. in the winter, and they're in. They're grouped up a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think most of what they do, from what we've seen, is just like scavenging. But they do. They you you saw a couple kills at that one no, farm yeah, last year. Yeah, the one the one guy uh, he called me up. He's like, "You got to come over here and set some traps," because he was going out there and in the snow, seeing like fawns dead and just like coyote tracks. There were multiple all over. kills out multiple there it, kills. within like two weeks last oh, year yeah. when you were trapping there. Um, so that Christmas time was tough on those deer when we had that like oh, sub yeah. sub yeah, zeros yeah, like twenty. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's weird because you hear that more and more. And it's because people like, you know, and by fair right, like in the upper peninsula of Michigan and Minnesota and stuff, the wolf populations are getting thicker. Yeah. And so you hear the stories or you see people, you know, with all the trail cameras out there getting wolves. And they're like, yeah, you know, I think they're moving down here. Or I'm seeing this. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, they're yeah. not. They get a long way to go till they get here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the variation in coyotes around here, like just the color is cool. Yep. Like, Cut black red, ones, black, red white, ones, blonde, gray. everything in between. Yeah. So that's what just everyone's a little bit different. So you guys tan all your own, like just with yeah. the brain, like you do it all. No, no. We, we have like a commercial. We use professional you know, tanning okay. stuff. Acid tanner. Okay. So. And then just have the, like the pelt, pelt to like wall lay around or yeah. yeah well, we take we, we the sell this. We do festivals like all summer. Yeah, oh, you do. Yeah, yeah. like Ohio pile and stuff. Yeah, there's. I mean, we probably did what six this year. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, that's, that's a lot of fun, just because yeah. we get out in the public, and we're teachers, so like yeah. we love explaining to people the process and talking to a bunch of knuckleheads too. Yeah. Like, oh yes, what Big, was that? Bigfoot stories, mountain oh, lion oh, stories. Oh, just yeah, man. as soon as they start seeing the fur, and oh yeah, I killed one that was 101 pounds. Like, yeah. You didn't kill a coyote that was 100 yeah. pounds. Had like, to take the collar off of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> From the game commission. Get yeah. that all the time too. Oh yeah. Oh, Drop, they released them. them yeah, they released them in the eighties, and yeah. We like, were just yeah. talking about. I had a lady in a parking lot uh, in Kentucky or we Elk Hunting. I was saying like, uh, you know, we weren't seeing anything, and she's like, well, yeah, that's because uh, they they gathered up all the elk and they traded them to Tennessee for black bear. That was the deal. <laughs> they <laughs> rounded them up. I was <laughs> like, what? I was like, she's like, yeah, that was the trade. We got black bear and they got elk. I was like, uh, well, <laughs> it's a done deal. Look it up. <laughs> look it up. Fact. Yeah, it's a fact. <laughs> Don't look it up. It's it's a fact. <laughs> But it's cool, like, we started tanning, and um, I would definitely recommend anyone getting into trapping, like, go through the whole process. If you're going to mm -hmm. catch an animal, learn how to skin it, learn how to flesh it, maybe even learn how to tan it, because it's pretty simple. Especially now with the market where it is, like, don't give, your, not, fur, don't give yeah. your fur away to somebody that's going to sell it for three times as much when you work so hard to get right. it. Yeah. I think people are probably naive to it. They don't yeah. know. Like don't even know. myself. Like I don't know. Like yeah. if I, you there, know, there was a period of time where I was when I was fleshing coons out, I couldn't eat eggs, which was a bummer because <laughs> I really loved eggs. But just you know how fatty they are, yeah. it just reminds you of an yeah. egg white kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I would do it right before right. breakfast because I was checking them before school, right? Yeah. And then I'd have to flesh these raccoons out. And I'm like, and I would go, and mom would have like a big bull pile. Are you guys of still trapping eggs? a lot of coons? Yeah, accidentally. Yeah, uh, accidentally. Say, we, we don't the target ass. them, but yeah. we catch yeah, we, enough we just in our them. canine sets. There, there's some. Say, yeah, dog there's groups. a couple of farms that the the farmers will ask, "Can you get these things out of here?" So we we will. Just to if they want tell us to tell them about Bob's place. What's that about Bob's with the meat trays? Oh yeah, we were like walking. We were going around this property near Jared's farm, new property, we leased it, and like we would see like all these like meat trays out, like like ground meat trays. Mm -hmm. Like, and it wasn't just like, we thought people were littering, so we were picking them up. Yeah. And then we like came back and he's like, oh no, don't pick those up. He's like, I just poisoned all that for the kids. <laughs> oh. And it's and like, who knows what's ever. eating it. Yeah, we're handling else. it. I don't know what he's using, you know? Yeah. Everything is eating that. Yeah. Probably. Complete non-target bombs, wow. you know? <laughs> See that kind of stuff. It's just, well. That's what they did out West with coyotes until kind of recently. Oh yeah. I and mean, they still try yeah. poison. Poor, poor antifreeze everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But then if you look at their research, they're doing that, and then the the years after, the reproduction rates are going the litter the rates roof. are going up. Yeah. Like they're adapting to all that pressure of poison oh, and everything else. Wow. Yeah. Seems really weird because we've we've talked to a few people. Uh, Casey Shootman was one who would, who went in and like you know pounded coons in an area to see what the like response for nesting rates and stuff were. We talked to uh, John Kilgo, John Kilgo, yeah, in South Carolina, talking about removal in South Carolina and then what the deer response was, and really. You know, they were seeing like they would remove coyotes and like as soon as they remove them, you know, so new it's ones. A, it's were, a vacuum, yeah, yeah vacuuming in on yeah. it. So it, it's such a weird thing because like obviously predator control is a super important part of this, um, and with the decreasing amount of trappers and you know, dude, killing killing coyotes at night. Um, you know, I know like Darren does it. Darren Hudick does it with like thermals. I find it with Darren. Yeah, that's a whole man. You learn so much about, I learned so much about deer the first time I went hunting with him. Yeah. We walk out there and we're scanning and there's like a field full of deer and he's like, all right, I'm going to hit the call. Just this lone wolf or lone uh, coyote. And uh, I'm like, all right, I'm just expecting all these deer just to like run. And he hit it and they're just like. Well, they hear that. They hear that every yeah. night. Yeah. And all, that's what he all said. All night long. It's what they hear. He said, this is their world. They yeah, hear this. this. Is they're, they're with coyotes every night. So this doesn't, nothing scares them. And then you're walking, like you said before, like in the dark. We're walking right up to deer and they don't care. They don't flinch. They, they don't, might give yeah. you a stomp, but that's it in, in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think the color matters? I was, Lucas was jagging the me about red, this a little bit. Because I've, I've got a green light or whatever. And my, and my thought is, like, I, you know, I don't know. I just always to... used red. Like, I mean, that's what I red. grew up Other with. When, I, when we yeah. used to go out mm -hmm. and Do you like think it even needs hunting? to be colored, though? Uh, I think that there is, like, red has been traditionally the, the color that they do not see the best. They still understand that there's a don't they say because like there's the a reason of the light they yeah, have like, they have the different isn't it uh like coyotes canines aren't supposed to be able to see red deer yeah. aren't supposed to be able to see yeah, green green but they can sense like they so they can't see it but they can't see past the lights either yeah it's there so it's yeah you're blinding them with it yeah, there's also shadows too like if yeah. there's veg in sure. between you guys they see that yeah, shadow you're seeing a shadow or if you're moving with the spotlight because like, that's we, what we used to do is yeah. we used to have a spotlight with a red thing and we'd be out there calling and we look like idiots yeah and you're because you're sitting there and shit, dude. I can't see shit with a red spotlight. Right. I'm like, is that one there? And you're looking for eyes. Yeah. Their red light is just lighting up the eyes. Yeah. And the first time I went with Darren and I was like, he gave me the scanner and I'm like, what the 
Dude, yeah, this thermal. is amazing. Like the thermal. Yeah, him and Squires and Justin all have yeah. thermals from some of the people we work with. Yeah, and they, mm. uh, it's like this. It's a why different would I, game. Why would I ever use a red light again? Because, and that's why those guys are efficient at killing uh, yeah. coyotes. Killing uh, over 100 a year. 100 like a year. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he's out every night. Every night. He hunts hard. Yeah, multiple farms, multiple sets. Jeremy's yeah. heard me say this before, but you talk about them western coyotes. I've got a family in Montana and they're so prevalent and the ground out there is so flat like for so far and they've got the snowmobiles oh, I've they seen, just run I've them over that before, yeah. they just yeah. run them over yeah they'll see them out there like a couple yep. miles or a guy like, oh, there's yep. one way out there just woof, like you know 100 miles an hour and it kind of stands no chance you know <laughs> They'll yeah. do big like expeditions. They'll get like twelve slides together and they'll run like down to Billings and they'll be like come back with however many kayaks, a couple dozen, crazy. you know. I know there's other guys out there, but like Darren and his group are very efficient. There's a lot of guys that think like, well, I'm just gonna go out and hunt coyotes. It it is not easy. Mm-hmm. At no, all. you can't there's so many things that you have to know prior. He he knows like in the terms call of sequence in terms of vocalization, that. he knows exactly what to do. He knows exactly what to play to bring him in, to get him excited. So he's yeah, he's a pro. Listen yeah. to this. There's a, a neighbor of my parents. Uh, got permission to hunt at night, shot their dog, and oh. it's an active lawsuit right now. Oh, my God. Or maybe it was recently settled or something. Like red, red light or thermal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to mess it up. Like, those new thermals, I mean, are sharp. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you can see what that, that coyote's I'm going to say it was thermal, I mm-hmm. think. Wow. Yeah. I mean, because he's not... He, I think a lot of people also think about, like, the long-range shooting and stuff. He's killing his a lot of his coyotes. I mean, they're not that far. When I was with when 200. I, yeah, the times I've been out, they've been under 200. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's come chip shots like real close. Yep. Um, but it's also cool like to see deer. Like we're at like these bucks in velvet, just walk. You can see the full rack and mm-hmm. the thermal, and it's yeah. um, it's really cool to see. Have you ever gone during, just during the day for coyotes? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot of fun. I've, I haven't done as much at night, but I limited experience if during you, the day. If you're somewhere where they get maybe have like a den close or they're in cover real close, mm-hmm. um, like I get them sometimes places like on my trail cams, like all day. Mm-hmm. So I know they're there all day. Yep. And that's when you want to, you, if you're close to them, yeah, you can do that during yeah. the day. Yeah. Cause daylight, that'd be sick seeing them come in daylight. Yeah. It's fine. It's nice to be able to just go out like in an afternoon. Yeah. You know, I think down. that's those rare, like in Kansas, you could do, you could call in Kansas all day and kill coyotes I've done it all in day. Ohio. Yeah. Have all, you? Yeah. Late, like in wintertime? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just, I mean. You can do it in the springtime, I always too. feel like it's odd when I see a coyote during the daylight. I'm like, well, what's, what's he we doing? We see a lot of them. I mean, yeah. they're around. I get pictures of them every day. Yep. Yeah. I've, if I've they're comfortable, they're very active during the day. Like, if they're comfortable with where they're at, um, yeah, I get pictures all day. So what do you guys think? Like, I know there's probably a lot of people listening to this. Like, uh, let's say like on one of my places, I've got coyote <laughs> issues or I got bobcat issues or whatever. What What is the first thing that you guys do if I said, hey, guys, have at it. You got mm-hmm. whatever, probably 200 in, acres in, here, go immediately at Immediately go to, go to Onyx or go to Google Earth and, and see, identify the travel patterns from there. That'd on be, terrain based Yeah, stuff? that'd be terrain edges, crop changes, things Funnels, like that. all that stuff. Just yeah. like deer. Yeah. Just like look using yeah. maps to look. And then baby just walk right to that area and yep. then almost every time it's yeah, that's what I thought it was. And then that's where you're setting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I mean how many how many traps are you putting out on a property? If you're if you're foothold traps and you're I don't know, like a It depends on the size of the of the property. Yeah, and like what the what the property's made of. Like so, some, farm, some farms some farms get four right? traps, some farms well, get yeah. ten traps. For example, like there might be a hundred acre farm and there might only be two really good spots on that farm to set. So you might be put in like three sets here or three sets there and you have six total on a hundred acres. Uh there could be other spots where or other farms that are smaller, bigger, where you might get more or less. But it's all about like the good locations. Like mm-hmm. you're not just throwing them anywhere. Mm-hmm. You're throwing them like where you know it's going to be the most effective spot. I love finding those too, like the the no brainer coyote spots. We do that yeah. when I'm out hunting and we're scouting. I'm just like, yeah, you'll right probably here. catch a pile of coyotes right, right there. Yeah. yeah, we do that. Con- we're always like, oh, that's a great trapping spot. <laughs> and do you guys find that you're getting multiples at that spot? Yeah. Oh yeah. Generally. Like there was uh right behind my house where I live. This was a. Uh, they just this guy just built a house literally right where I catch coyotes every year. Like I had these sets, it was like this uh, two tractor roads met, it's a little intersection, um, and I would catch multiple coyotes from the same trap in the same spot every single year. And this guy built a house right there. Um, but yeah, it's the same areas. They're coming back. Um, they're using the same spots over same and over. Same travel again. routes. That's the same thing with, with coyotes too. Like that's their one downfall, and that's why cable restraints, like snares, are very effective because they use the same trails over and over again. So if you see a coyote come out in the field from a trail, it's he's like going to be back one hundred percent. He's going to be back on that exact trail. Yeah, set that trail. So. Mm. 
And do you have to have special permit or classes on the restraints in PA? Yeah, you have to take a separate class. Yeah. I teach that now. But you do? Uh, yeah. yeah, we both just signed yeah, up to... Yeah, I'm a you know, HTT instructor, which includes cable restraints yeah. and stuff. So. Are they still doing a bunch of... Because I know a lot of people are taking like online stuff. Anymore. Yeah, I just I just did one two weeks ago, just uh, right in town up here, and probably 60 kids. Wow. Which I even asked, I'm like, there's an online option, right? And they were like, yeah. I was like, well, I'm surprised That's this many awesome. kids came. That's awesome. They're not as frequent, though. Um, they only yeah, have a couple a year, probably in, in this county. There's probably five or six a year. And there probably won't be another one until maybe next, next spring. Next spring or something. So I know you guys worked with Alex on one of our projects for like the Hunters Connect stuff. Oh, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, trapping. Yeah. The trapping so one, we yeah. just got another contract with them for uh, IHEA where we're doing, we're redoing all the like 1980s like shoot, don't shoot videos uh, and yeah. things like that. The ones it, that they would show at the Hunters. Yeah. The exact well, ones. Like 15, 15, 15 minutes still long. using the same video. Yeah. Yeah. We're, so we're making know. new ones. Oh, that's cool. We just got contracted to do that so it's so funny because like we they sent us the old ones and i'm like i, don't, I wouldn't change these they're like it's like a guy yelling at his kid to like shoot a ditch <laughs> yeah. chicken he's like go get it go yeah. get it and the kid's like i don't want to and he's like shoot it and he shoots it and he's like don't do this yeah. and then like his dad's patting him on the back i'm like that's why he's, that's why he loves him like yeah. Yeah. he wouldn't love him if he My didn't dad loves his son yeah, that yeah. one yeah. that one video that like is still stuck where the guy's calling turkey and he keeps wiping his mouth with a red handkerchief oh, yeah, yeah. and like there's a guy sneaking up behind him and all of a sudden he just turns around and it's like boom. Yeah, yeah. And, and my hunter safety course that guy like drove down our throats he's like if you go turkey hunting in pennsylvania you will get You'll shot die. and you will die, <laughs> You'll die. Yeah. yeah they paint this really horrible picture yeah, dude, i remember that like i remember like putting on my socks and they were white and i'm like uh, <laughs> yeah. and are they gonna like, think i'm a turkey i think, no. I think i'm gonna die yeah they're gonna shoot you. Well, now people are crawling behind those. You know, oh, yeah, those reaping strut on them. Strutting decoys. Yeah, reaping, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I remember that. It like growing up, I ran into a guy turkey hunting. I walked up on like his decoy set, and because he had a strutter out, and it was like you know two early two thousands. People didn't put strutters. Yeah. Up. I like walked up and it was strutter, and I thought like he was either gonna shoot me or I was gonna mm -hmm. shoot him. It was like a war standoff. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like you know people just didn't do that stuff. Now it's like. I used to always hate people that used a gobble gobble call too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who does that shit? You know, if you got you're out there, blah, 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 yeah, trying to get one to sound off. I'm like, don't do that shit. Yeah. I'm I've gonna, never used I'm a gobble call. You. Yeah, me either. Yeah, mm -hmm. me either. Yeah, I'd probably if you did, I'd probably make a move on you. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd be, I'd be moving because we love <laughs> like slipping right in. <laughs> yeah, I'm like right up on top. Of you. We do that a lot, like turkey hunting. We'll get up and move all the time. Like, yeah, that's, that makes it exciting. Like sitting there. I mean, that's the what we do. Tree. Deer hunting a lot yeah. of times. Till now, you have kids. I don't even sit. I don't sit down. Miserable. Miserable. I'm like, all right, come on, we're gonna walk this way. I look behind him. He's like laying on the ground, rolling <laughs> yeah. around. I'm like, what are you doing? Get up! Yeah, shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Oh, dude, it's almost fall. You and I are both going to be in a tree stand with brand new Hoyt bows. We're going to be shooting the RX-7 carbon bow this year. I know Hoyt's also got the Venoms out, both equally smooth shooting quiet bows. Heck yeah, man. We got a convert on our hands this year. We got a lifelong crossbow guy with a vertical bow in his hands for maybe the first time ever, a good friend of mine. And uh, we've got them all decked out with uh, the inline accessories uh, from the QAD integrated ultra rest uh, to the quiver. And also he's got the SL sidebar mount with a couple of stabilizers from Hoyt as well. So that's going to be a six shooting bow. Yeah. And Hoyt's been cool enough that anyone listening to this can save 20% on any of the soft good apparels online using the code Hunter, H-U-N-T-R, no E. Uh, and if you want to look at the latest lineup of Hoyt bows, check out your local Hoyt dealer. Get serious, get Hoyt. So I don't know if we told you, Jared and I just bought a farm in Illinois. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, we saw that on one year. Yeah. Yep, and so probably a, a banging trap and farm, actually. Just no. close oh, your, uh, about it. Days your uncle or some uh, aunt or somebody My wife's farm? cousin yeah, is out in Illinois. It's right near there, yeah. so yeah. we could even double up. Yep. I'd like to do that sometime. And, yeah. uh, but the, old, the older guy who uh, we bought it from, he didn't want to sell because he's lived there his whole life. He's 85, 86, lived there his whole life. Doesn't hey, want to sell. I think he's 89. Yeah. Is he? Pulled, pulled the farm off the market. He's like, I'm not selling. You could offer me whatever I'm not selling. So we basically said, well, what if you could live in the house? Like, we won't take your house from you. You stay in the house. You have to maintain it. You have to pay insurance. We, but we just hunt the farm. We own the farm and hunt the Do farm. Do you just parcel it then? Or? No, no. We own the oh, house. Oh, he's renting from you. It's no. like a life estate would be a permanent. Yeah. We just did a two-year. We're not taking okay. any money from okay. him. Right. The moment we did that, that guy's attitude changed completely to us. Goes, when well, okay. when we came, we came back to to set up and cameras and do some stuff out there, and he he pulls up and we didn't know we didn't know how sharp he was because like we met him everybody the one time. told us he was like on deathbed basically. Yeah. They're like, eh, Carl's not with it. He doesn't know. He pulled up and we're like, he's like, eh, I don't he know. knew exactly who we were. I said, you remember me? He goes, I remember you. 
Yeah. yeah. How, many, how many acres is that farm? 144. It's enough to do something. I bet there's a lot of coyotes and stuff on that. It's a lot of CRP too. There's like 50 acres in a CRP contract. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Further west, so it's better. Yeah. 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 So he's yeah, like watching also. over the property for you, basically. Yeah. Hopefully it, not. I mean, hopefully well, he's just staying in his house. Yeah. 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 But, but he I has mean, eyes on the. Pro- I mean, it. it it's what sold the property to us. If we would have said, no, you got to get out. Yeah. We need your house and stuff. He would have never sold us the farm. Yeah. He turned down our first two offers. Because mm-hmm. that was not part of the deal. Right. Yeah. And then so we were just like, okay, well, clearly he just doesn't want to leave. So what if we let him stay in the house for, you know, we gave him two years, whether he stays there for two or not. Um, his family, have to his pay family's him. owned it since the 40s. He's lived there since the 50s. And it's never changed hands, basically, in the last... 80 years mm-hmm. nobody 80 in the years. family took that or nope he's got two daughters or something and they're just no interest mm-hmm. so it'll be it'll be cool but it's that kind of relationship and because he's still staying there jared and i like went to the local bar and we're like oh we bought carl's everybody knows that carl's still staying like, oh there. carl's place and everybody knows that we bought carl's place so it it, it makes a big difference if we would have went in and kicked carl's ass out yeah. We would not be liked. Unwelcomed, right? Yeah. We would not be liked in that area, and it's just that's that's how it goes. And you know, looking forward to going back to that spot and, and crushing some tacos. Oh. Like, so, how often do you think you you'll hunt that, or once or twice, three times, maybe? Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know. Yeah, we it's talked about it earlier. It'll yeah. pr- this year. I'll probably just you know mid October we'll catch a cold front. We'll be like, mm-hmm. dude, we should probably we'll run. probably be there two. Uh, we I bet we go late season. We'll be there two or three times this year. So um, we can get this year because uh, we missed the c- cutoff for the application for uh, landowner, landowner tag. tags, which oh. gives you two archery yeah. tags and you can use them the entire year. Which would be each. awesome. Two bucks. Two buck yep. tags. So it's two bucks day. It still is. So we have to kill one. This during year gun we season. can kill one during archery. You can use your other. You can use your gun tag. You can use archery equipment during your gun tag. Yep. But next year we'll have two. Each of us will have two <laughs> archery tags. So like November third and fourth, we can kill boom boom. And the chances of there being like four trophies for yeah, us to four sh- not not good, but if there's like you know one or two and then two management bucks, like we have a couple right now, like 130 inch five six year old bucks that you know need an arrow. It's funny you call them management bucks. We're like, oh dude, well, maybe just let Illinois, me add maybe them. In Illinois. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. For, well for the area, right? Yeah, like we, we know area. what's possible out there, like g- genetics. There's a and, bit of a gatekeeper out there. Um, in fact, our agent's kind of one of them in that, like he knows everybody that's bought in that area. He knows who's selling in that area. And I mean, you, you buy in that area to kill absolute giants. Like we, we know there's multiple 200s a mile North of us right now. Well, when that corn comes down, it's an empty field between us and them. What are the neighbors like? All killing giants. All killers, right. Yep. All, all, you know, passing big ones to kill giants. You you have pictures of local bucks that have been taken there? Yes. That's cool. You have the neighbors doing the same thing. Like that's what makes. It's not all of them, but it's you know the majority. Yeah, though. yeah. We have one run in with a guy. Well, it's, it's so not far. a bait state. That's one of the biggest things that brought us uh, out there. So like in yeah. Ohio, you know, even with a lot of acreage, we suffer yeah. because there's drama across. Not a bait state out there, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of like non-resident stuff. So it's like there's minimal hunting, not that huge advantage of of the baiting thing. So it's like the playing field's kind of. Yeah, dope. we walked into Carl's house and he had. 196 inch eight point on the wall that he found dead oh man eight point nine nine point head drop i guess yeah something like that it's funny though because like that picture was on there was a listing at one point they listed it for sale his uh insurance agent listed it for sale (laughs) Mm. i I still know how that works that's like i'm an i mean i'm an agent i'm an agent (laughs) yeah (laughs) you're an agent right i am an agent and so you see the thing and you're like oh there's a nice deer you know and to see it in person i'm like that's 198 inch Nine point. Yeah. Like a thing it's is giant. Yeah, the pictures like don't do him justice at all. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We we've got some really, really good younger deer with like amazing genetics. Like some giant Well, pretty rapidly here. We've got new bucks showing up. Like as Daily. I think corn is starting to come off, things are starting to shift. It's we didn't have much the whole first two months. We had camera three months, whatever. Just we went out and put you know, just poor man food plots basically just broadcast us into standing CRP. CRP and mm-hmm. torched it or you know, paid pay a kid to torch it. And we don't know. <laughs> like, there's definitely some rye in some of it. One of them definitely has some brass, brassicas, at least in one corner of it. But not nearly as good as it should be. We're just kind of bound on time. So next year, hopefully, we can. You know, we'll learn this year. Maybe, maybe have some success, and then next year we'll 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 put a little more uh, effort into just it. Just rather sink my money into land than Wall Street. Dude, it was yeah. re- it was like a, how hot was it? A hundred degrees, ninety eight uh, no, degrees. Dude, it was one hundred and fifteen with the heat index when we were out there. I like, mean, it was not. It felt not. It looked safe. like we were had just gone swimming. Wow. When you run cameras out there, 
versus Kentucky, Ohio, wherever else. Do you see, like, if you're, I don't know how many you run, but, like, if, if you were running a bunch. We have, like, eight on that place. Have you ever noticed, like, patterns, like, synchronous movement patterns? Between multiple states? Yeah, or, like, yeah. how far... Cause, cause we have this, you know, that the thing that watching the woods thing that, yep. so we have a network of couple buddies and I don't know, maybe we have like 50 cameras running now, but we're all within a hundred miles of here. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's like things turn on everywhere within 10 minutes. The cra I don't, it was either two watch. or three nights ago was when this mature buck showed up behind my place right up here with another probably two, maybe a three year old eight point that I'd never seen before. And at the same time I had like a handful of bucks in Kentucky on, on my farms that I'd never seen before. And like all, yeah, it's, but then the last two nights I haven't seen them yeah, it's, anywhere. It's, we're in a slow couple of days here, but uh, it's, it's crazy. It is weird how you kind of see to, that, to but that, yeah. we, we kind of see it from, because it's an East to West thing. Like we'll see them now Well, we have Kansas too, but Kansas and Illinois, we'll start seeing movement and it's like, Hey, in Ohio or Kentucky, we're it's probably going to see something yeah. the next day kind of, yeah. well, usually it's because the, you know, the fronts are the same, like, from Weather the Midwest front. to the East, yeah, it's like, you know. West to East front. It's, it's relatively the same. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of the moon? Last thing here. <laughs> no, <I laughs> yes mean, or no? I mean, if I'm going to say. Well, for trapping, we do, like, I noticed that well, there's a dark moon. Like, there's animals running. Well, I was like, going to ask like more crazy. on the predator yeah. side yeah. than anything. Yeah, but that, I mean, that's, that's so much influenced by weather. Because if it's the full moon, you can't see it. It's dark. I think everybody agrees weather is a bigger factor. Yeah, that, that's right. kind of what it is we've noticed coming down Yeah, to. We don't really pay attention too much to the moon when it comes to hunting or anything like that. No, it's weather. We're weather weather guys. Sure. If sure. you had to pin us as one Ditto. or the other. Sure. Well, yeah, we are too. It's just it's it's intriguing because, like, dude, there are some absolute it's slayers. Cool, like, yeah, like, I teach physics. So, like, there's literally gravitational pull differences depending on where the moon is at. Mm -hmm. If it if it's above us, yeah. if it's over here so the, on the other so side tides. of the earth, like it, yeah, it makes the tide. So there there are things that are, if you have like Affected. if you're more in tune with your inner ear crystals, like animals probably are, like they can sense that. But does it it crystals it, in your ear? Yeah, does it make them? Yeah, I thought you used a Q-tip for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, does, does that, is that can I get a candle? <laughs> I don't know if it does anything. It would be interesting. I, I, I'm still, yeah, I don't think it's anything, but, um, there's people fishing and tide I, makes I sense. I want it yeah. to be though. I, I want it to be something. Yeah, Cause it could yeah. be something predictable and it'd be like, okay, it would have to be the, the overhead or underfoot, the gravitational side, because yeah. everything else, I mean, cloud cover, all this other stuff has way too many factors to say, Oh, we should, full moon, we new should, moon. We should go back and look. I shot that buck on, uh, September 6th. I, I Dude, know the red moon is the entire month of like November or in September. Like, it's no, just, no, it was the week. It was the week that I was hunting. Like I just, for somebody told me or something, I was like, it just happened to be the whole week I was hunting and I didn't see shit most of the week, mm -hmm. but I, I saw that deer twice. A couple, couple years ago, I went back and I threw <laughs> old pictures. I wrote down the date of, I think I've killed 25 bucks. And I wrote I wrote down the date of, of every single buck kill. And I knew approximately the time within an hour or two when I killed him. And I went back and I, into like climate data, and I pulled the, the, te the high and low temperature of the day, the temperature when I killed the deer, and the wind direction and the barometric pressure, whether it was rising or falling, and... And I, I didn't look at moon yet, so I'm going to go back and... Anything on the yeah, weather? Yeah, what correlation on saw? the weather? Uh, it depended on... like Some of them were rifle kills. Right. But the ones the ones in October were all northwest winds. Mm -hmm. like, like the base. Yeah, north, northwest winds. And between, I think it was 48 and like 62 degrees. Yeah. Wow. So... Just like my science, I've heard, I mean, my science mind looking at data. Yeah, I mean, I, that's why I like the GPS collar data and stuff to see when deer move in, you know. It's and super it, interesting. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, in an area you hunt, you're able to put a collar on uh, a buck? And just, we, how many times we, have we talk thought, about like, that? Like, we want to, yeah. we want to, kind of, and like, you can go online, you could buy pre, like chips to put in your dog. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> just put just, one in like, a coyote. We catch coyotes, yeah. so just put one, in, I, don't, I don't know if it's legal. But sure, it's not. I don't it know if it's be. not legal. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, innocent until proven guilty. Right? It would be I would interesting. To, I mean, I to, see, to see that because, like, I think that same thing, and that's the kind of cool thing about whether it's it, trapping or deer. Like, I just think, like, what is that mature buck doing right now? He's doing like even right now. It's it's six twenty. Mm -hmm. yeah, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's doing crazy. something. Do, I've every once in a while I stop and I'm like, they're out there right now. Yeah. They're just out there laying or doing whatever they're doing. I'm like, he's doing that something feel good to know right that they're now. Out there, yeah. Like I have cameras right behind my house, just like you. And, and sometimes like if, if I'll, if it's before I've gone to bed and I'll get a picture of like a giant back there, I'm like, 
He's 50 yards away like, from me. Right it's like 11 there. at night, but he's, he's 50 right yards away. And I go, I go, and I look out in the darkness. And I'm like, Can't see shit. <laughs> see him. Like, nah, right he's there. just right there. Yeah, tra- right yeah there. in the light of them trees with some flaws. And yeah, just, and then yeah. He's, yeah. by the next morning, he's gone. Yeah. Like, mm. He was there. I know, man. It's crazy. Just like f- sensing that presence of that deer. Mm. <laughs> well, we're in the magic season at this point. I mean, this is dropping, what, uh, October? First. Oh, sweet. We're in it. Like fully engulfed oh, yeah. at this point. These cold mornings have just been uh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, we're finally Full in the mask. 40s for them. We were stuck in the 60s for low yeah, temps for a while. Dog shit. I, I would go outside every morning. I'm just like, no. no I just no, sweat no, no. Yeah, immediately sweat. when Dude, I walk outside. We need outside. some rain so badly. We've gotten yeah. more here than like at my farm. Yeah, minutes. we've gotten a couple yeah. of randoms here. Yeah. Even just 20 miles away, this area's been okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're so Western. dry. My clover yeah. looks like, you know, Toast. It, it might not make it. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, you're getting cooler temperatures. You get a couple. Cool, there's get, get you get dewy one in like the morning, good, yeah. like half to a full inch of rain in a cool streak, and it'll be fine. Hope so. But that's where we're. Waiting for. we're chance we get like a forty percent chance, which is the best we've had in a while. Next week. Hmm. Cool. Well, appreciate you guys coming in, and we appreciate everybody listening to episode one forty nine. Hard to believe next one's one fifty. I have fifty of these things over the hump. Over the hump. So we uh, we appreciate everyone listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks again. Later. Thanks. It's take me. Oh.